Now, this is not an industrialized country, Jamaica. It is fundamentally an agricultural country. Um, among its chief exports, well, we have a bauxite industry, but that's another matter, are sugar and bananas. Neither of which can command a market without, um, you know, a purchase of it having a, a, a without subsidy. The British government. Um, has long subsidized sugar and bananas, giving us special prices and all this kind of thing. Um, among our other products are meats, beef, pork, uh, goat flesh and um, dairy products now what has happened to these there's a story on the front page of the observer this morning um, the United States government is authorizing the sale of um, meat meats that are coming from cloned animals um, th th this is not animals that come into the world in the in the by natural process these are animals that are are the result of you know, genetic manipulation, I suppose you might call it, um, in, the, in the laboratory or wherever. And uh, there are people who are concerned about the health aspects of this. Um, they don't know what they're eating. They don't know whether, um, whether there will be consequences down the road. Um, the United States authorities are saying no one you know but the of interest to Jamaica the our interest arises from the fact that we are imported importing into this country huge quantities of meat 600 and uh, what's it now 628,242 kilograms of beef per month um, and of course if our tourism industry um, improves if the number of tourists coming into the island increases then we're going to be importing even more than that now what has happened what the, 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 the really interesting question here is what is it that has happened to our livestock industries in Jamaica? We are importing, I believe, volumes of milk. So what has happened to our productive potential? Why is it that we're not producing more beef more milk pork mutton why uh, we have seen a lot of advertising about um, chicken meat I don't know 
whether the, the volume of production there is um, meeting our needs or whether we are having simulated to import um, th that meat. But this points to something that is to, to a serious problem in the economy. Why are we having to import um, those products? Why aren't we exporting them? Why certainly are we not in a position to meet our needs and to do so economically? It, it is another comment on what has been happening in Jamaica over the past many years. We have forgotten the idea of economic development. Everybody is talking about um, what is it that um, uh, oh I can't remember the terminology that is used for those journalists who, um, who are incapable of understanding um, was it rational? I can't remember. But um, when em empirical analysis yes empirical analysis well, I suppose I'm going to hear that that I'm one of those who, well, maybe the principal one, who doesn't appreciate, doesn't understand empirical analysis. But when I see something like this happening in a country that is not industrialized, its principal um, field of economic activity is agriculture although they say tourism and, but we are in the we haven't yet successfully um, broke, it become an industrialized country so we are still an agricultural country basically though we have some tourists coming in we do provide some services and so on but and we have a lot of unused land but we're importing beef and I gather we're importing scallion and we're importing tomatoes and bananas and all sorts of things we're importing oranges there's something this speaks this speaks to something very seriously wrong and there we hear then we hear our brilliant economists among them those who have huge libraries of economic writing and who do a lot of reading and and so on and you know more than anybody else with the possible exception of the head of the Federal Reserve Board and then we hear the talk about agriculture booming and you know how much it increased this year and how much it is to increase next year and all this kind of thing <coughs> right and yet here is it we, we can't supply and you remember you know remember the work there was a time in Jamaica when these industries were were moving forward you remember T.P. Leckie and all the work that he did creating the first tropically adapted breed of dairy cattle in the world and we had people coming here from South America and other places to buy the Jamaica Hope I don't know. We we we're not we're not really concerned about economic and any fun, economics in any fundamental way. We are happy to talk about um, exchange. Well, that is important too. But the fundamentals of economic economics arise a from the need, the man's need to consume. 
to survive, he must consume. To improve the quality of his life, he must consume more. And to consume, he must produce that which he needs to consume or something else that he can, he can exchange for what he needs to consume. That is what is fundamental in economics. Not balance in the budget, the government's budget. And, um, important, I'm not saying they're not important, but that is what is fundamental. Right? And the question is, what it is that is happening in Jamaica that seems to disable our productive processes. And in this connection, I can't forget a statement that Mr. Um, the, the Minister of NetServe um, that Jamaica is not a place that is friendly to investment. Right? And that seems to be the problem. We're not pushing production. We're not getting our people engaged in the productive process. And that is what this story in the final analysis is about. Okay, uh, we go to a break and then we come back and we'll be on the telephone. Thank you very much. We're back here online. Uh, hello? Hello? Hello, good morning, Mr. Perkins. Good morning to you, sir. How are you this morning? I am here struggling along. Good. I just want to piggyback something I heard a gentleman calling this morning about. Uh -huh. Yeah. Maria. Uh, um, hello? Hello? Yes. I came to Port Maria on last week, Tuesday, from the United States. Uh, I think you're breaking up a bit. Pardon? Um, would you speak more directly into the telephone? I'm trying. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Yes, I'm hearing you better. Okay. I I live in the United States and I came on vacation to Port Maria. One, because of, I heard about the flooding. No, no, we, ha we seem to have a bad connection. Would you like to hang up and just call us back immediately? Hang up and call us Okay. Uh, hello? Sorry about that. Hello? Hello, yes? Hi, good morning, Mr. Perkins. Morning, you, Mom. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, I am having a little problem here with cable and wireless. Uh -huh. And this is my story. I, I come, I, I live in New York, but I come to Jamaica quite often, maybe two, three times per year. Yes. Now, every time I come, I usually prepay my telephone bills. You Just, prepay your telephone yes, bill? Yes, sir. I deposit like like three, four thousand dollars each time just to cover the basic charges when I'm away because nobody lives in my house. Uh-huh. Okay. On September 4th, I, I was here in the summer. So on September 4th, I went to the office at Leader Plaza in Mandeville and I, my, I had a balance of, of $494.52. Uh, plus or minus. Hello? Plus or minus. Pardon me? A balance plus or minus. 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 Right. So they had that for me. Oh, they had that for you. Right. Then that's plus. That's a plus. Right. Uh -huh. That's a credit. Yes. Anyway, I deposited $3,500. In addition. In addition, because I was leaving on the 8th, back to, back to New York. So that is leaving just on the $4,000. Right. Uh-huh. So I am back now, and I I received a, I have I found about three bills, four bills here, and there is nowhere on those bills that the three thousand five hundred dollars which I which I deposited on September fourth is indicated or I would say credited to me. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, I have made five calls to the office in Kingston, Halfway Tree Road. 
And every, I, I have spoken to supervisors and other people, and they all say, we'll get back to you, you know, to resolve this problem. No one has called me back. Now, I told them that on, the, on my receipt is stamped C and WJ, Employees Co-op, Credit Union Limited, Teller 11, September 4th, 206, paid with thanks, $3,500. Now, Mr. Perkins, they have, they have sent me a bill for $2,765, right? All I want to know is what has happened to this $3,500? When I, when I paid this, paid this money, the teller, who is teller 11, told me that the computer was down. And as soon as the computer came up, he would credit my account with this. Well, why did you pay that money? Because I'm away, sir. And, and no, 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 which money are you talking about now? I'm talking about the $3,500. Oh, I'm you, didn't get, you didn't get a receipt for it? Yes, I have a receipt. I have a stamped receipt here. Oh, well. Yeah. You don't have a problem. Right. So I'm not, I just want to let them know if, if, if anybody is listening, I am not going to pay one red cent more until yes. I find well, out. Yes. Well, let me, let me suggest something yes, to you. Yes, sir. Just write them a letter. Yeah. Telling them what you have told me here. Yeah. Yeah. That you, you paid this money. Let me that you me. therefore had a balance of just under $4,000 right. with them. That since you've come home, you've got the, the, this bill or these bills, whatever, right? Uh -huh. right? That does not do, that do not together mm -hmm. um, add up to the amount that you had on credit. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And that therefore you do not expect that, but you haven't seen any mention of that on the bill. No, so sir. would they, no. would they please sort that out? Yeah. Right? But Mr. Perkins, I call them, you know, I have spoken Don't to five call them. people. Write them. Good. The, the problem when you call, you see, mm -hmm. Mom? Yeah. Is that there is no record. Yeah. Of, of. Of my call. The transaction. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. If you write them. Mm -hmm. You are, you are accumulating evidence. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you ever have to go to court. You can produce these letters and the responses that yeah, you get. Yeah, make copies them. of the letters that I'm okay. sending to them. But Mr. Mr. Perkins, how come, how a, 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 a giant corporation like this could be Well, so but there's, that's speakable. nothing... That's nothing to excite yourself about. Yeah, I'm not saying because I, don't, I have no... Don't get overexcited about it. I don't care if they cut, cut the line off. I don't care. Because huh? I, I can get a cellular. No, 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 no. You know? If they cut the line off, you see? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Some years ago... Yeah. Right? I had a case situation where mm -hmm. um, somebody called me, I think it was, uh -huh. on my telephone. Uh -huh. There was a recording on it that said that it has been disconnected. Right. For, um, I can't remember how they put it, but it was clear that for non-payment of bills. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. um, I went out, called that tele called my f phone uh -huh. and heard it myself, right? Uh -huh. I had paid the bill, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. I went to the bank, asked them to let me see the check, uh -huh. you know, where, if they had this, this check come in from. Okay. I saw the check, it was there, right? right? Um, so I got on the telephone, called the, well, I didn't write this because I wanted immediate action. Right. Um, called the general manager, I think it was, of the telephone company, told him what had happened, mm -hmm. and told him that I was giving him one hour to get that telephone back in service. Good for him, yeah, good for right? him, yeah. And within the hour it was back. See? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you haven't got to play around with these yeah, people. I, 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 I agree if with you. If you know your rights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this, yeah, fine, this, just this, write him. Yeah. Write them. Tell them that you hope that you haven't seen this credit mentioned in the yeah. bill. But if somebody stole it, the guy maybe stole the money. Well, but you know, that is none of your business. Right. That's you true. have a receipt for it. Right. I have a receipt. Stop okay, matter done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the and Mr. Perkins, they, they should be giving me interest on That's my money because business. every eh? every I I always have credit, always. Yes. You know, I leave them three, four thousand, five thousand uh -huh. dollars each time. Well, I it's come. not a problem. I yeah. mean, 
Okay. It may be just a little mistake that has been made or something. But has this had right? the courtesy of calling you to say this is being looked into? Or it's, yes. You know, I, I don't see a problem here. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, Mr. Perkins, All thank you. Have a good day. Good. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Okay, hello? Hello. Hello, Mr. Perkins. Morning, sir. Morning, how are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? I am pretty good. Thank goodness. Oh, good. I'm not complaining I'm because eh? my confederate, no, I'm saying, I'm not complaining. Yes. My confederate, no, my would say, you complain, you complain nobody listens anyway. Yes. So it doesn't make sense. And, um, from the look of things, you may be, um, you may be about to take off like the economy. Like the economy, huh? <laughs> 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 I heard a gentleman speaking to you yesterday. I, about farming. Yes. I think he's from Center. Yes. Sounds like an old school mate of mine because uh -huh. I think he says a uh, champion farmer for quite some time. He has been, yes, he said. Mm. As a matter of fact, I think the name is Miss Miller. Uh -huh. You know, he's a, he's a brother in law of the Prime Minister. You know. Of the Prime Minister? The brother in law of the Prime Minister. The, okay. the Prime Minister's husband is his brother. I see. Uh, actually, he's a old schoolmate of mine, uh -huh. so I know the guy quite well. Yes. But farming, why is farming so unprofitable in Jamaica? Well, that, part of the reason, I suppose, is that it it tends to be highly inefficient, right? But why is it inefficient, Mr. Perkins? Well, because uh, it doesn't have the the access to the capital that it would need to transform itself into a more efficient operation, I suppose. Maybe it's bad management or associated no, with um, lack of capital? No. The, 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 I don't know. Um, farming in Jamaica is, um, to a large extent, done by people who can't find anything else, be anything better to do. <laughs> but I hear the polls that B say there has been some almost 30% growth oh, in, in, in agriculture. <laughs> is there any, 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 any truth to that? Well. And where is the growth? I don't know, sir. But um, old time people say, you know, that Mount McPhee say anything. Because I remember Mr. Ferguson. Uh -huh. In the 60s, they were making over sugar cane, sugar for example. They were making over half a million tons of sugar in the 60s, you know. Half a million remember, tons. I remember. Yes. I remember back in the 50s. No, in they're the making 60s. 100 and something thousand. Eh? No, they're making something like 130,000 yes, tons. I remember one year they went o over half a million tons. Yes. Yes. So what, it goes to show that we can do it. Of course Those we can. Those days, Tate and Lyle, you remember that uh -huh. English firm? Of course They were in charge of Froome, they owned Froome and they owned Money Musk. Yes. And those were the days, you leave school, you want to go and work for Wisco. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I guess sugar was king then. But I don't know what has happened. But and, they, and they were making profit those days. Yes. No, you drive on the highway 2000 right on the goal, right down uh -huh. South Coast. The lands up Back here. The, the British were still heavily subsidizing our sugar production. The British? Oh, yes. Well, I hear people talking about reparations. That's part of the reparations. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently. They had to. I think they had, uh, they were, they had to help. I think they were thing. paying something in the region of um, 30 dollars 30 US dollars a ton mm -hmm. was it? I can't remember mm -hmm. um, this is recent relatively recent when the um, the international price was as low as um, I can't remember $12 or something. I, I can't remember. The, I have to look it up. Uh-huh. But, um, 
they, it was heavily subsidized by the British beginning with imperial preference and, and after we became independent various um, you know adaptations of imperial preference uh -huh. but I think what we have to do we have to get efficient a lot of people are saying that we have well, to get out of sugar that's what it's about but get out of sugar and go into what Mr. Perkins well, that's where know. thousands and thousands it's one of the biggest employers in Jamaica you know? I know so where would those people go and not only is it one of the biggest employers in Jamaica but it has a a substantial uh, demand for labor mm -hmm. that is about um, you know General used to tell me that um, he never born for Mashet. He born for law. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? <laughs> the sugar industry needs rather fewer persons uh -huh. um, in the sphere of law than they need in the sphere of Mashet. <laughs> and it, this is maybe is making its contribution to the failure of our education system. Because we don't need to educate man for law if we want him for Mashat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, we are diminishing the potential of that person. But we have these archaic industries, right? Uh huh. And we need them to, well, we need them to continue. Because we can continue to make money out of them, even although they are inefficient, right? Now, there is some question of how much longer, whether this subsidy will continue beyond, what is it, 2010? I don't, the level of subsidy that is being poured yeah. into this cannot continue. It is not going to continue. It's billions and billions yeah. of dollars. It's like a sinking fund. It's like not going it, to continue. It cannot continue no. because the, the, the money is not there. So it cannot well, continue. I mean, the British have the means of paying for it if they want. But I suppose they see no reason why they should continue to pay for it. We have to look into ourselves, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. And I think we can do it, you know. We have to look into ourselves. Hold yes? on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you. Yes, sir. I remember back in the 50s, you know, sir. Mm. Uh, G. Arthur Brown, you remember him? Yes. He was saying that, uh, Secretary and Governor of the Bank of Jamaica. Yes. He was saying that the sugar in... I think he was the first governor, was he? Yes. No, or was, was he? it Richardson? Uh, no, no. Richards, I think. I can't remember. Um, G. Arthur Brown was saying that the sugar, sugar industry was a sponge to sop up unwanted labor. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. He was an economist, you know. Uh -huh. a qualified economist. <laughs> <laughs> but it really was, you know. And it still is today. Well. So these people are not ready to find anything else. To the extent that it is. Skill wise. To the extent that it is. Uh -huh. it, it suggests that um, that we do not really know what we are about right there should be no such thing as unwanted labor it should be our objective to be able to, to to achieve full employment to be able to put every Jamaican of working age um, I think what he meant Mr. Perkins was uh, labor that can cannot be accommodi accommodated anywhere else. It's not a matter of accommodating. It's not unwanted. But it's just no, that no. it cannot be accommodated. No, 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 These no, people are labor, skilled. Labor should not be... The, it should be the object of government to ensure a situation in which all available labor is put to work. That's the idea, sir. Well, that but that is that is the objective of that should be the objective of policy. Well, I don't know. I don't know anywhere because in the world, Mr. If, Perkins, if, where that has been achieved. Yes, sir. Where? Well, Singapore to begin with. Is that about that? Yes, sir. They had to. Singapore had to go to employ, to import labor from Burma and Sri Lanka to begin with. Uh huh. Right. 
And if you live in Singapore today, Singapore, you'll need a Singapore domestic. Singapore must be an exception, Mr. Burger. I beg your pardon? Singapore is an exception. Why an exception, sir? Because it doesn't happen anywhere else. Name me another country. Well, I can't think of... Well, um... The, the um... Look at a country like the United States. That is we constant. have a whole lot of unemployment in the United no, States. No, 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 no. Huh? The, no, 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 no. They, 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 they have, they have they a have lot of unemployment. Of about on five point something percent now. Yes, yes, which yes. Which is which? Which works yes, out to be hundreds of thousands, millions. Yes, but hold on a moment. There is unemployment and there is unemployment, right? At any time in an economy, people are are moving from there you have a job right uh -huh. and for some reason you resign that job right you you're for the moment unemployed but that doesn't mean that you're not going to be in a job in a month or two months time or depending maybe you might want to sort of relax a bit and take off a bit of and um, and then you go back to work, but there's a job that is available to you. If if the if the people in the United States, the four or five percent that are listed as unemployed, yeah. if that was so, why would the United States be so ready to accept um, people from other countries like Jamaica? Why? Yes, why? Well. They take them in, but it doesn't mean that they're going into a job. A lot of them are up there not working. Are they? Yes, sir. Because they, they haven't found jobs they're yet. Not working. Because they haven't found jobs yet. And um, a lot of them go there to clean people mess. No, man. Yes, man. A lot they of come them come down here, they bling bling and what have you. What do you think they're up there doing? Oh, come on. Mr. Perkins, that's the truth. I don't, know. People do I, I don't know. I don't know why people are up. People go. People Some go of them, there. a lot of them. People go there looking for opportunities. Some of them, you know, finding opportunities in illegal activities and so on. Uh. But I'm not. That that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the the fact that the United States uh. is importing labor, and not only from Jamaica. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. I, you, know, the, you know why, sir? And the... You know, one of, one of the reasons... And what I'm Perkins, pointing out... Hold on, sir. What I'm pointing labor. out to you... What I'm pointing out to you is that when you hear that there is 4% unemployment in the United States, it does not necessarily mean that though that 4% of labor... They don't there have there any no jobs. Place, there is no place for, the, for, for it. Then why do they report it as unemployed? Because that is what it is. There are there is four percent uh -huh. of the working of the potential um, of the uh, workforce. Four percent, five percent, five point one percent of the workforce, right? Uh -huh. That is not at the moment actively employed, but that does not mean that they are going to be without a job for the rest of the year uh -huh. or next year, right? It just means that they have moved out of one job position and have not yet moved into the other. Mr. Perkins, is that just a matter of moved out of one job position and a lot of them are being laid off. A lot of them have been kicked Maybe, out sir, of the jobs that they have course, for many years. But of course, they're being laid off because they are... They have become obsolete. Hold on, sir. Every year, you see, in the United States, there is a large number of business failures. Right? New uh -huh. businesses coming in and not making it. Right? Uh -huh. But next year, there are going to be a similar number of new businesses coming in. Starting up, eh? Right? There are lots of business starts, a lot of failures. Yes. When the failure, they lay off labor. Right? Uh -huh. When the new ones coming, they, they attract the, some of that or most of it, labor. But tell me, Mr. Perkins. Yeah. Don't, don't you think it's unfair yeah. to be comparing a small country like Jamaica with the great United States of America? It's not fair, you know. I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know comparing in what sense. In every but sense. What, 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 all, that, all that I'm saying, sir, Singapore is an even smaller country than Jamaica. 
there you go again. Singapore, uh, I told you, Singapore is an, is, is, is an exception. Why should it be an exception? Because you can't name any other country like Singapore <laughs> with what you're saying. No other country stands out as Singapore. Bula, I gather in Bermuda there is full employment, sir. There are people in Bur Bermuda who have two and three jobs. Bermuda? Yeah. We well, see telling me these things, I don't know if it's true. I'm well, <laughs> I don't know. Then why I've you never heard that. Why do you ask me if you think it's likely that I will not tell you the truth? I've never heard it. I've not. Uh, and I think I well, read a lot. Go, go and I've read here, widely and I watch the news. Yes. And I don't see anything about Bermuda having full employment. Oh, yes, they have full employment. Eh? They have full employment and they have a very high per capita income. Another thing, Mr. Perkins. Yeah. Our Jamaican people that have migrated to the United States of America, mm -hmm. they have a way of turning their noses at us here in Jamaica, saying how oh, we are crime-ridden and everything that yes. is bad is affecting us here. Uh -huh. And I resent that. You resent it? Yes, I resent it. No, f hold on, to begin resent with. Resent it greatly. To begin with. Is it because there are, are a lot of them not living any lives. Hold on. Mm. Is it true or is it not true? A lot of it is not true. No? I go to Miami and New we York City. We are the crime-ridden society. Mr. Mr. Perkins. Uh, we, I, are we not a crime-ridden Yeah, we have, our, we have our problems with crime. But oh, I, go, with crime? I go to New York City. We don't Miami. have greater problems with crime than most countries in the world. Mr. Perkins, I go to Miami and New York City. I travel a lot. And every time you turn on the radio or the television, <laughs> It's pure murders, pure killings. Oh, yes? I don't hear them saying that. It happens there, too. Killings. Ask anybody who travel on television in Miami yes, or New York City or many, California. Hold on a bit. Murders and kidnappings, hold, 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 the car, jacking, hold, all sort of things. Hold on a moment for me now. How many murders a year would you say they have, have in the United States? In the United States? Yeah. A lot. I don't really know the figures. I'm really. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't. Is it more per capita than Jamaica? I haven't looked at the figures. Well, look at them. But all I know when I turn on the TV is pure murders and killings. I think it's unfair maybe, maybe of so. them to be condemning us. Maybe they, maybe they, they report, um, they report the murders that do occur there. But the fact of the matter is uh -huh. that the murder rate in Jamaica it's high. is far higher than that in the United States. It's high. Yes. And it's a big part of it, you know, the United States cause it. Oh, is that they are exporting the guns to us. Oh, they, they are exporting the guns to us? Yes, sir. <laughs> and they do nothing to stop it. The guns are coming in and we are, we are being killed via the gun. They, look here, sir. Guns mm -hmm. don't kill people, you know. I know you're going to say it's people kill people. People kill people. I agree, but if right? they didn't have the guns, <laughs> it's a If kill. they didn't have the guns, they would use something else. But you wouldn't have the triple and quadruple murders. You may well, have one know. man being killed by the knife. I don't but you know. don't kill four or five one time. No, I don't know. You can. There are other ways in which you can kill them. <laughs> one last thing, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. In New Kingston, you see, I've noticed that the no parking signs and no parking areas are taken over by taxes and are nothing they? is being done about it yes the no parking areas the no are parking areas the, the yellow areas yes the yellow areas the, park, the areas that are parking yellow on the road yes taken over by taxes well that is where they prohibit stopping yes prohibited but they are part there and nobody troubles them oh Nobody trouble. I understand that the, most of these taxes are won by policemen. I don't know how true. Is that but so? nobody troubles them. And something has to be done about it, man. Well. These areas, um, you as a law-abiding citizen, you mustn't park there. But the taxes are parked in the yellow areas. Uh -huh. I think that is wrong, Mr. Perkins. It is wrong. You have a good day, boss. Okay. Right let's, hope, let's hope that the mayor is listening and will do something about it. I just hope so, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you very much, sir. Thank you very much. All the best to you. We take a break. We come back shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? 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 Can we try some? Hello? Hello? Hello, Mr. Perkins? Yes. Yes. 
Good morning, sir. Good morning to you, sir. Yes, um, I was just to that gentleman, you know, previous gentleman there. Yes. Talking about um, crime in the United States. About what? Crime. Yes, yes. In the United States. Yes. yes. And when he said that every day you get up and <laughs> see on the TV about murder. Yes. Maybe you do, but, but people are a lot safer in the United States than they are here. I tell you, Mr. Perkins, okay. I have, I have, I'm a regular traveler, uh -huh. United States, and what he's saying about the get up so often and here, I don't hear anything like that. You might have, no one again, you, yes, you might have one or two shootings, yes. That is, that is and true. You might have maybe one or two kidnappings, but nothing to compare with, to with this what country we hear here. in Jamaica. That is Nothing to compare to this country. Yes, you're right, right, you're right on that. All right, I, I, I am. There's a place in, in New York, Brooklyn. Uh -huh. The um, bed -Stuy. Um, The name bed -Stuy is to uh -huh. uh -huh. They say that this is one of the worst places. Yes. In um, New York. And I, 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 have, I have lived there. And believe you me, Mr. Perkins, I have never heard not even a gunshot, believe you me. And I, I, I have walked that area late, very late uh, at, at night, right? And they would say that that is one of the worst ghetto areas, you know? Uh -huh. So, 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 and, and, and there are areas here in your country that I would never even venture, you know? So, 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 you know, you can't compare. There's no way. That is, that is... Because crime in Jamaica, man, has escalated to the point that it has driven so much fear yeah, into people. Yes. You understand? Yes. And what we have to do, Mr. Perkins, instead of coming around and giving those sweet talk about how things are looking up and whatever, uh -huh. to sit down and try to deal with the situation, because yes. talking about it and trying to talk it away and will not yes. go. And it is no use fooling ourselves into believing that you know things are not are not as bad as it being made out or or that um you know we are on the threshold of a new beginning or some wrong oh, thing. we hear that thing right. over and over we hear it over and yeah. over you know but the real situation is really hitting us uh -huh. you understand you know another point i was listening to i you know sir you know what is fascinating that um that the people who are today saying that the whole economy is poised for takeoff, right? Mm -hmm. Give them six months and they'll be telling us the same thing, you know. Of course. Of and, um, well, especially by in six months' time, the, the election should be coming close. That's right. So you're going to hear more so of that. As, the, as the, the closer the economy comes, the more poised we are... We will be for takeoff, and the more light they'll be at the end of the tunnel. Yes, and, and we can't take away as you grounded. To, according to the spinners, you know. Right. And another program I was listening to a gentleman, you know. Seemed eh? very, and another program yes. I was listening to a gentleman, very learned individual. And he was saying that, you know, people, you know, you have some people who, you know, they, they, they tend to want to go abroad to, 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 to work, you understand, and that is a big problem of the mind, right, oh. because why yeah. don't you stay here, and, 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 and... I think that's a load of nonsense. Very much. They have no opportunities here, right? Somebody coming out of school or out of university, so there's, there's an idea floating around that they could be entrepreneurs. They could, um, they could, to, to begin with, to be an entrepreneur requires capital. That's right. Right? So how are you going to raise this capital? You have been working and saving. Right. That's one way of raising some capital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You work and you save. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, the person immediately coming out of university, mm -hmm. the typical person, what capital is he going to have? That's right. You must have a right? base. And if he doesn't have the capital, he's going to have to borrow. And to borrow, he's going to have to have some, some collateral assets, or something like that. Some collateral. Yeah. Right? Where is all this coming from? You see, people just get right? up and talk. And in any event, 
to be a successful entrepreneur, you need not just to have some money to throw around. That's right. Right? That's you right. need to have some ideas that are cogent and um, and calculated to succeed. And Mr. Carefully Prince, calculated. Yes, sir. And you know right? what happened? Some of those individuals... Where is the, where is the experience? When, when you go and work in a place, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. right? You gain some experience of that business. Right. And maybe you see a little opportunity here yes. or there, right? Mm -hmm. And you can go and set up your own thing right. and exploit that opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But without that kind of experience, we, what, what, the, the young man coming out of university or out of school, right? Yes. What is he going to be? No, I want to start a business. But what business do I want to start? <laughs> That's right? it. Um, critical questions and then Mr. Perkins some of those individuals are, you are here talking about you know if you go away to work it's like well you are leaving your country to go to develop some of many of them Mr. Perkins they uh -huh. were educated abroad and they worked abroad for years uh -huh. you know and uh, uh, and have uh, and have made made it well, yes. but now probably reaching a certain age, no retirement, no is the time that they realize that, you know, those who are going away now, you know, to 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 help themselves when there's hardly any job opportunities here, uh -huh. you know, they, 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 there's a problem of the mind, you understand, and 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 probably you 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 would be. Not, 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 not what you would call someone who, who, who is loyal to your country for going away. Many people have gone away and they have made it very well. Mm -hmm. You understand? And many would like to come back here. Uh -huh. yeah, but it's posing a great But, but I tell problem. you something, sir. Many have come back. Right? Yes. And have left again. That's right. right? That's right. That's and right. many have come and bought property bought land and, and put up houses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it is not unlikely that the houses, those houses today, right. can't fetch a price right. to cover what they paid for it. That's right. right? That's it. That's it. So, so, so when people just get up and talk, Mr. Perkins, they don't put themselves in certain situations. Yes. When, when they are in this situation, you know, that the time they find out, boy, that, you know, what they were saying can't work. Yes. You understand? But when they are not in this situation, they talk a lot of things. And that's why I say, man, a lot of hypocrisy fill, has, uh, and fill this country right up to overflowing. Uh -huh. Even from top comes straight down. Okay, let you know, me tell you something. People, a lot of people are not aware of the impact of politics mm -hmm. upon business in this country, you know. That's right. That's um, right. You talk about these people coming in and buying, p p p buying land and housing and so on, mm -hmm. right? And, and losing money off it. I mean, the value of that house that they put up yes. today. Right? If they had to sell it, they wouldn't recover the money that they put into it. That's right. right. Uh, I, I know of a particular case in which somebody brought, bought a property mm -hmm. for $45,000. Mm -hmm. Right? This was, um, this was just before the elections of 1980. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And within a matter of months um, wanted a valuation done on it mm -hmm. because he wanted to borrow some money to do things You're right. and the valuation was then put at um, this was after the change of government now Yes. the valuation was put at three hundred and fifty odd thousand dollars <laughs> right? look at that I, I know another person who bought some land mm. again right. prior to the election of 1980. Yes. Right? Yes. Paid down the money, fortunately, mm -hmm. and they signed the paper. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And after the election, the people sent him back the money, mm -hmm. saying that they had changed their mind. They weren't going to sell again. <laughs> okay. You had to take them to court. Okay. Okay. Right? Um... 
So what is going on in Jamaica in politics now? Mm -hmm. Is affecting values, you know. Of course, seriously of course. affecting values. Of course, of course, and we, we we see that we see that trend spread out almost covering every single situation in this country, man. Uh -huh. You know, and 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 you know, as a result of this, Mr. Perkins, we're not going to be able to move forward if we cannot. I mean, get the politics out of, out of, out of the, 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 this whole scenario, man, and try to to to. to Think of Jamaicans, you know, just as people, you know. But the, 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 what, one of the things that we need to realize uh, is that the, the politics can be a devaluing, devaluating exercise. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 And therefore discouraging investment. That's right. That's right. right. So there's a whole lot of clean up of it to be done, Mr. Berger. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you very much. All the best to you. Thank you. all the best. We take a break. We come back shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? 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 Not hearing you. Hello? Yes. Is that good, Mr. Perkins? Good. Yes, Mom. Um, good morning, Mr. Morning Perkins. Morning to you, Mom. I need to comment on two callers that you had recently. Yes. One is about... Um, the crime between comparing crimes between Jamaica and the United States. Yes. Now he said he was there and he didn't hear a gunshot in certain things. And what? He said he doesn't think that um, there's as much crime as it is here in Jamaica. There is as much crime where? He said it's worse here in Jamaica than it is in the USA. I don't think that's what he said. What but he anyhow. Said? All right, let me continue. You disagree with that? Eh? Well, uh, Mr. Perkins, I don't say Jamaica is not bad on crime and violence, but in my opinion, Jamaica is stigmatized too. Because I'm a returning resident. I live in the United States for 43 years. For what? 43. 43 years? Yes. Uh -huh. And I'm home now, but every now and then I take a run over. Uh -huh. I was there three weeks ago. Yes. I went in November for Thanksgiving, uh -huh. and in Brooklyn alone, Mr. Perkins, not in the whole bar as you know, uh -huh. just in Brooklyn, not New York, uh -huh. it was 109 murders for one month of November. Uh -huh. And I said, well, we don't hear anything like this in Jamaica, that these things are happening here. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. if a person coughs and spit in Jamaica, the reporters go back to New York and say they cough and they spit blood. Could I ask you something? Yes. Yeah. How many murders have there been in the parish of St. James? Or how many were there in the parish of St. James uh, in November? I don't know. I wasn't here. I wasn't here in November. That's uh -huh. what I'm telling you. I was in Brooklyn. Well, all right. How many, how many murders were there in Jamaica? Or have there been in Jamaica for the year? I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not positive on the the numbers, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. But what what I think you're okay. getting me on? What How I am many, saying. This what is the population it, huh? of what's the population of Jamaica? It's uh, almost three million. Eh? Two point five million. Three point five. Two. Two point five. Seven about. All right. What's the population of Brooklyn? Well, I don't know, but it's, it's far more than. Well, uh, check those out, no. Yeah. So what you're saying that to the, between the population, the I beg your pardon. So what you're trying to say now is that um, Jamaica is less populated than Brooklyn, so the crime less what populated than Brooklyn. Well, I I, I should expect that, um, and I think it is generally ex expected. Yeah. That the the larger a population is, would they not would not, would. Oh. Oh, I get, I get your point now. The You're greater the potential. For the smaller population, eh? the crime is high, is too high for uh, the population. Uh -huh. That's what you're saying to me now, right? I'm not hearing you very clearly. Oh, what you're saying now is that, um, in other words, um, Jamaica's um, population is smaller than Brooklyn. Yes. So, yes, I get what you mean. So, the, the crime rate couldn't be comparative in that. Uh, yes, I get your point now. 
Yes, I would expect that. Um, but maybe there's a, there are particular causes of crime in high, high crime rates in in Brooklyn. Yes, but I'm, I'm not saying that. If, so fine. I mean, if, if 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 there is a high crime rate in Brooklyn, there's a high crime. But there's a high crime rate in Jamaica too. Oh, yes, Mr. Bergen. Uh -huh. But um, one caller said he didn't hear a gunshot in this place called Bedford Stuyvesant. He didn't what? He, he was mentioning about uh, a near name Bedford Stuyvesant. Uh huh. And and he was saying it's a very bad place, and he didn't hear a gunshot or something like that. Bedford Stuyvesant is not a bad place anymore. Uh, I I, I I'm really I'm not hearing you clearly, you know. Um, he, he's on about Bedford Stuyvesant. That it's a bad area. Are you hearing me? Yes. What do you say? He says Bedford Stuyvesant in Brooklyn is a very bad area. And he was there and he didn't hear a gunshot for the time that he was there. Uh -huh. What I'm saying now, Mr. Perkins, Bedford Stuyvesant was a very bad area years ago. Not now. The bad area now is East New York. So if he doesn't hear anything going on in Bedford Stuyvesant... No, 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 no. Your voice is gone from me. Uh, I wonder if we could turn this Mac, this headset up a bit. Um, we're having a little bit of a problem here. Yeah, because I'm speaking loud. Yes, go ahead. Yes, um, he, he's saying that. Um, yes, all right. Bedford Stuyvesant is a very bad place, and he didn't hear anything went on while he was there. Huh? He said he he didn't hear any gunshot or anything while he was there. Yes. And this is a bad area, Bedford Stuyvesant. Well, Bedford Stuyvesant was a bad area, and that's years ago. Not now. The bad area now is East New York. Uh -huh. And the, the changes in Bedford Stuyvesant are such, in the years when it was bad, all the whites moved out to Long Island. Uh -huh. The blacks moved in. Yes. Now it changes for the better now. And because the, the rates and everything, the taxes in Long Island is killing the whites, now they want to come back to Bedford Stuyvesant. Uh -huh. You see, so it, it's not that bad. You see, they want to come back. Uh -huh. The bad place now, Mr. Perkins, is East New York. Is where? East New York. Yes. That's, that's where it's bad, not Bedford Stuyvesant. Uh -huh. So I just wanted to make that clear. I'm not biased, but I'm just saying what I know. I see. Because I lived there. I see. Bedford Stuyvesant is not bad now. It, it's just stigmatized. Uh -huh. It used to be a bad place. Yes. And some people hold it just the same, but it's not anymore. The so how long place, have you been back? I've Here. been back two years now. Two years? Yes, but um, I still go back and forth. You still go back and yeah, forth? Yeah, because my children and my grandchildren are there. Yes. But it, it, Jamaica is bad, very bad. You, would you say that? Very bad? Yes, it's bad, Mr. Perkins. It's very bad. But, um... What is bad about it? The, the killings and the, you know, the extortion and all those sort of things. Yes. You know, and I think this extortion business, I don't know if I'm right or but I want to feel it's coming from America. You want it to what? I want to believe the extortion business that they carry on out here. It, 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 it originates from from America. Uh -huh. Yes, because they, they do that a lot. You yes. See? But I'm saying the situation in Jamaica is bad. Very bad. But I love my country regardless. If it goes down, I go down with it. I see. If it's up, I'm there because I left here when I was 20. You see? And I'm retired at 62 and I'm over now. And I'm back home. For two years, and I have nowhere going again, uh -huh. no matter what. But yes. sometimes you, sometimes you hear people say things that you know for a fact that's not how it goes. You, you, you just want to make a point, you know. Uh -huh. So I'm not saying that Jamaica is, is crime-free or violence-free. It is in a bad situation. It's bad. Uh -huh. But um. If they're going to um, stick up for America to say what happened here is not happening there, it does, Mr. Perkins. It does happen. Um, well, it happens in... It happens. But does it happen to quite the extent, same extent, when you take population into account? Right? Mm. 
And does, is it happening? Well, but I agree with you on that. Yes. I agree with you on and that. And is it happening all over the United States equally? Or is it happening more in some locations than others? You know? Anyway, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. All the best to you. Okay, hello? 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 Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning to you, Mr. President. I am in, I'm in Syracuse, New York. You're where? My name is in Syracuse, New York. Yes. Would you speak directly into the phone for me? Sure. And raise I'm your sorry. voice a bit. Um, I, will, I will try to see if I can. Yes, that's better. I'm in Syracuse, New York. Uh-huh. And I'm listening to you via the internet. Um, and I've been listening to this program from all from last night. Really, I just decided to tune in to the station, and I've been listening. And it's been, I've been you guys have kept me awake. I have a lot of things to go and do, and you guys have interfered with my my definitely my rest and my sleep. And so I have a lot of things to say, and you guys have interfered with my my definitely my rest and my sleep. And so I have a lot of things to say, uh -huh. and I know I can't be um, I have to be responsive to your show, so um, I, I don't know. And so I have a lot of I am in the Americas that you that you speak of, and I also have a, a passion for Jamaica, and I'm sadly seeing that some of the violence that goes on there. Um, it's stopping its development. And that development that I, I, I speak of has been, I, I, I actually came to the conclusion that, um, that the people who are in control of Jamaica, and it's not just the politicians, it's a lot of the business um, class, for lack of a better word right now, uh -huh. who have kept the crime level at a high pitch because if people are, are afraid, in my opinion, then they cannot see um, the, and, and, and individualize, then they cannot see the problem, and nor will they be um, responsible to fix the problem. And those who who, are, who control, who manipulate the situation, they get to do what they need to do and put their money to the banks. And they make a lot of money by keeping the crime level and keeping Jamaica destabilized. And so hold on a little bit. You, you think it is what? The business class that is, is um, stimulating crime? I, is that I what you're that saying? It, a, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak to that in a second because of, as I'm speaking, I have not get the opportunity to speak fully about it and, and for myself to hear it, to consider it. So, but I, I know I'm of the opinion that there's an element within the, I, not necessarily, if we're talking the business class, we mean the, the, not the person who has a little shop and he's hustling to make his, to, to feed his family. There's another element. Look at Haiti, for example. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do a quick comparison to this, because Haiti might be a much more truer example of this. Haiti, the, the, the rich class, the upper class in Haiti, Maintain Haiti in this in this chaotic situation, so that they could maintain their their their, their class status and their privilege. How does it how does it make it easier or more likely that they would be able to maintain their class by having Haiti in the condition it is? Because they never they're, the crime does not affect them. Oh, hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. Back online. Hello? Yes, hello. Yes. Would you try I'm to a, keep I'm your voice online. up for me? I will, I will attempt to do that. Huh? Um, let, me, let me go back first and say um, thank you um, for the breath of fresh air, for what this show and um, the earlier show on this entire station um, brings to the people of Jamaica and to um, our people uh -huh. <laughs> as we try to figure out and think about what to be done and how to address um, whatever ails us. Um, and the issue of uh, continuing to say that relative to the issue of the violence at the topic that you're speaking at, 
speaking on, um, again, if you were with me, as I was saying to you, that the issue of, of Haiti as that example, bringing it home to Jamaica, there is a, there, there's lots of people who are able to bring them, put their money into the banks and do not get hit over their head as they do that. And they, and they go to their party and they drink their champagne and they do their thing and there's a high level of people that's in Jamaica that does not get affected by the crime and the violence that the regular folks, mom and dad, and the single mother with child. You know, sir, I'm not, I'm not sure that I, I would agree with that. If, I will hear you. If Jamaica did not have the levels of crime that it, it has, those people would be, would, would be better off too, you know. Um, and if the I, I people think, who I, are committing crime, many of them because of frustration, because of the, the, an absence of opportunity and so on, if those people had opportunity to work and to, to create wealth, and to get good incomes to themselves. The people who are now calling themselves rich in Jamaica, who are not really rich if you're going to compare them with um, the rich of a country like the United States, the Bill Gateses and people like those, Donald Trumps, um, they would be better off. They would be making more money. They would be more secure. Right? They could go for walks in the evenings. You see, around the city you see what, and all this kind of thing. One of the provocative thoughts that somebody put forward in the air um, this morning on, on an earlier program and, and some of your callers have responded to it was the third class, first third class citizens in in a, um, in, a, in a first world country and a first class citizen in a third world country. Because I, I think it's a brilliant precept, uh -huh. and and you have, you have spoken to it as well. Um, which interests me and intrigued me to continue to think further about it because I'd actually written it down as something that I thought was quotable and um, I could utilize in my whole life activity. Uh -huh. the, and you have furthered it by saying when you engage the issue that, um, you know, how are you going to have these kids, um, these young people graduating from college and then, you know, don't have, can't, you know, you want to stay in this country and, and there's, no, there's no mechanism set up for them to, to be incorporated, uh -huh. which is the same issue that we have to engage why when America dumps its elements of um, returning residents that it forces back home because they have done drug criminal crimes and so forth and so forth and get themselves in, um, entangled in the law because it, it can't fully employ them. Some of the other ones that cannot be fully employed, they end up doing, um, it forces certain activity and end up being deported back home. So Are they being they deported, deported because they can't be fully employed? Well, uh, or is I, it I because... Huh? I, I'm, I'm, I'm utilizing that. I have, I have opinion about that because I, I forecast the, the disturbance that I, that would go on in, the, in Jamaica from the being from people who are coming back to Jamaica if Jamaica did not put into place certain element of integrating those people back. And with Jamaica have not yet to do, to do, which is to integrate those people who are coming back home who have not dealt their home who um, was left when they were a child and coming back well, and become criminalized in America and, and America has actually um, make them become criminal and now drop them back off home into this place that they're not at. So, well, I don't know. Um, I mean, there, 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 there is dispute about that because uh, some people are saying that they, many, of the, many of them are deported for trivial offenses. Right. Well, that, that's, a, that's that's a debatable issue because you you in, you in somebody else's country. Yes, and, and there is a, um, there is a dispute as to whether the the returning residents or a study which claims that there is no truth in in it that the returning residents are stimulating criminal activity here in Jamaica. Well, I, 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 I would be suspect of that, of that report. And why wouldn't they? Because, huh? again, if it, the, I, I cannot see why wouldn't those returning residents participate in criminal activity. Uh -huh. If they're in an environment that is not, that they, that, that are at the airport, they're not literally set up an, um, an acceptance, an yes. acceptance committee yes. that is set up at the airport to, in, to say, all right, these are the way the jobs are at, talk to these people, 
let me help you. Let me get you some um, health care. Let me see how you're going to house you. Are you going to get some food? This is, um, America does not, I've not heard a plan that said that these deportees is coming home with $5,000, $10,000 in their pocket. They're coming home um, with nothing unless they have connected support within the, yes. the, the elements. Yes, yes. Right? So yes. then the uh, Jamaica, you look at a demand from the United States that this, you, it, it is in, inhumane for you to deport these people into a situation that they, they, they know not without any means of subsistence. Even your prisoner, you're out of, you're out of jail with a, a small amount of money. And, 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 and because it's no small amount of money within the American system, those prisoners are in the back in jail within three months, within a month. Within a month or three months, those same um, prisoners that have been let out within the American system are end up back in jail because they have no means of subsistence, no, no connected to the community which they were let, let out to. Um, and the community have, have not created an vehicle to integrate them themselves. So yes. this is a problem. So Jamaica has to take it upon itself to create that with with only love, even though we are poor, is the country can is can be said is poor. With love, we can create a system to uh -huh. integrate those people and make it look and cause see in my mind. All America, right, sir. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Hello. Hello, Mr. Perkins. Hi. How are we? Well, I'm coming on, sir. You coming on? Yeah, man. Good. Mr. Perkins, yeah. I have two weeks to live here. And the two issues is that with oh, the first one, one and in man in him, in man David, how much people did they hold on the issue of Mr. Lynn and his wife? Hello? Hello, yes, sir. Yes. How much people did they hold in man David with the Robbery and Mr. Mr. Lynn and his wife. Uh -huh. I think they held um, they held three persons. Three. Two men and a woman. Then do a do then hold with the with the car then. What happened to them while I do not hear to them name? Um the ones that they held with the car? Yes. I'm not sure, um, did they hold persons with the car or did they find the car abandoned? They find the car also, as, as far as I did hear the news, is them hold somebody and charge them for the car with uh -huh. the and radar. No, I'm, I, I don't, I don't really know the details. They find them. the first car with the guy where Going accident. Oh, uh, could you speak directly into the phone? Is it, is yes. Tell, yes. That's better. Them, them find the first car uh -huh. that was in accident. Yes. And I've been in an accident. Yes. Apparently. And then I hear that them find the second one. Eh? I hear them find the second one. Yeah, I, yeah, I heard that too, yes. So why we don't hear nothing? about them, we only hear about the, the, the guy and his mother. Yes, because they found some furniture eh, or some stuff in that house. Oh. So they say that came from the Lynn's house. Oh. Right? Then what happened to the case uh, he took that them is a transport? What happened to what? The corporation chuck that them, the job is chuck, that they say, transport the good they believe. Oh, they, um, they, 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 they didn't say it was a corporation truck, you know. They said it was a garbage truck. They said it was a garbage truck, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily a garbage truck owned and, and they, operated by, um, management. Yeah, Solid Days Management Authority. They said they did tease the truck, you know, Mr. Perkins. They did tease the truck? Yes. Oh, well. And then we do one year not more again. Yes. Uh, what kind of is them keeping business then? Uh? Well, I don't know. Um, they're investigating, sir, and, you know, there's anyway, a certain amount of uncertainty. Anyway, I'm not alone eh? for the time being. Huh? Uh, we can come after that for the time being. Uh -huh. My problem, Mr. Perkins. 
Speak directly. Speak directly into the phone. Yes. Did you remember when you was a boy and the farmer cut him cane? Them no cut down no sucker, you know. Remember two months after you have cane taller than you. And them used to make it better than a valmer used fertilizer. No, them cut down the little sucker them. And when they done them mulch and throw fertilizer, you think that can be the cane as what you should be? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it couldn't be. It's only a state cane you to cut through. But every farmer you to cut cane and left tall cane for them. They don't cut no sucker. Uh-huh. You understand? So therefore, by the time the crop come around again, you will suck a beer taller than me and and beer again so much more fruitful crop at that dual time. Uh-huh. So when we hear them at all again, Mr. Perkins, you remember that the government of the Yeti, them didn't start a plant that backward for the female fertilizer. Uh-huh. Then what happened to that plant? I don't Them know. Man <laughs> what happened to it? I don't know. And the government. It's probably it's gone the way of so many industries <laughs> that we have had in Jamaica, you know. Then, sir, you believe now, after farmer here, a tool, Fertilizer. Hello? You're on a cell phone? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello? Hello, Hello yes. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Not too bad. Okay, all right. Um, I just have something I'd like to share with you. Yes. Um, when I was going to school, I see Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. I noticed that right through my school, they teach me nothing about money. They, they the taught you nothing about money? Important. No, nothing. School never teach you nothing about money. Uh-huh. The importance of it, why you must save, and so on. Uh-huh. As I grew up in Jamaica, I mean, I know people take loan and buy houses and loan and buy cars and, you know? Yes. So it's an easier way of life. But I have a friend. Then it was started earlier. And I said to him that, um, I'm saying going to the bank. So I said, where are you going to the bank for? I'm saying I'm going to borrow a um, hundred thousand from the bank. So I said, where are you going to use that security? I said, I'm going to use my house. Come out with an asset. I said to him, Mr. Perkins, young man, your house cannot be an asset. Right now. When you finish, pay off your mortgage, have your title, or in essence, if you go and rent the house and get an income, then that house is an asset. Mr. Perkins, would you believe yourself? Most people think that their house is an asset because they can use it as a collateral to borrow. But I'm telling them, until when you finish pay for the house, getting an income from the house. Because I said to them, look up the word asset and see what it means. What does it mean? No, I'm asking your opinion on it. What is an asset? As you understand it. Uh, asset is anything that is of value incoming, that you have cash. For uh, example, something of value. Cash. Something of value that you own, right. that you possess. Right? right? Right. Well, isn't the house a thing of value? Yes, Mr. Perkins, but it's not of value until when you have, until when it's, it's bringing in. For example, if I borrow two loan on my house. No, but hold on a minute. Mm-hmm. If you have a house, yes. you don't rent the house, so, yes. so you're not earning an income from it directly, from the house. right? No. But you live right. in the house, right? right? Mm-hmm. Had you not had it, you'd have right. had to rent a house. Sure. And let us say that you you rented the house for what? Um, 
forty thousand dollars a month. Right. Right. So, so that house, although you 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 haven't rented it out, you're not getting, but it's you are saving from living in the house. Mm-hmm. It is you 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 you're not having to spend, let us say, forty thousand dollars a month. To pay okay. for rent, then then it becomes an asset. But it is an asset. Um, my understanding, Mr. Perkins, uh-huh. is if my mortgage is a forty thousand a month, uh-huh. forty thousand dollars a month. No, no, we're not talking. it, whether you have a mortgage on it or not, it is an asset. Right? You're entirely wrong on that. Okay? No, Thank I, you I don't, I, Hello? 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 Yes, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Not too bad. How are you? Well, I'm fine. You're, you know, so how is your Christmas holiday? It was very pleasant. Well, Mr. Perkins, I, when you talk about the economy this morning, I, I totally agree with you because sometimes we do really think about economic much uh-huh. less than thinking about something else. But we as a Jamaica know, Mr. Perkins, where we, we are not producing. From long time ago, we are producing. I don't know what is going on in this economic system. Telling us that we must 
but you know, Mr. Perkins, what, what, what is, what is, what is, let me tell you something about these economic sources. If we are trying to work in hard so we just work hard and just don't know, sir, because, you know, when let me tell you something about economic economic is, 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 a co and you, you know what, the business is competitive to, you know, so you have to be in a, in a competitive business, right, sir? Uh-huh. So, I, you know, when we export, when we used to have our own productive system, right? Uh -huh. We can export anything and it was independent, no. But no, Mr. Perkins, we're, in, we're, we're importing things and it's the more I we import things, it's the more economical problem we're going to get. But it's not just that we're importing things, there's nothing wrong with importing things. Yes, and I but they, not they, wrong the with, thing is that we're importing we, too much of something. We are importing more than we're exporting. Yes. And we are importing goods that we could have been producing and indeed used to be producing here? Yes. Yes. Right? And I say that we must import things, you know. We don't have where importing things. But uh -huh. in, in my own view, sir, if, if, if we even more import things, is the is more we're going to pay the expense of it. Uh -huh. Right? And you remember, the, 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 the product, the, the imported thing is expensive. Than out here, you know, sir. Mm. Right? So don't, don't people need to understand what we buy from is this export. <laughs> but we need to be as Jamaican you know, and get up and understand that we are Jamaicans and we must can import something. No matter how you try or whatever, we must can import something. We must can be productive. And one thing to sir, why we're not productive is that as you said about the, the youth in Jamaica, sir, we could have said them, we, 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 you're saying that um, they're supposed to be turned to like scientists or whatever, you're turning, and they'll be turned to criminal monsters. Right? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, sir, it's, it's we, we. Hello? Hello. <laughs> what is happening, sir? Oh, God. Okay, uh, hello? 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 Yes, good morning. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'm calling the Charles General Department. Huh? I'm calling with the Gen Registrar General Department. Yes. Um, my mom's birth certificate, I received it. She received it, rather. And when I'm checking, on up, upon checking the, the sex, they had mail on it. I took it in on the 19th of January of this year. I've went, um, I went there on two occasions. They told me that I have to fill out another form, which I did. Up until now, I haven't heard anything. I keep calling them. They have me running around in circles. So I don't know what to do. I called you to see if you could assist me. You know, sir, you know, Mom, the, the number of people who call this program Complaining about the performance of the of that um, institution. This, yes. They are very incompetent, Mister Perkins. Well, I don't know. If, 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 I mean, but if if what the people are compla the complaints that people are making are valid, then something ought to be done about it. And and, and nothing is being done. Well, I don't. And know. it's a sad situation. I don't know. Because it, next month is one solid year, and I haven't heard anything from them. Oh, my God. I've even went there, and, and, and I've not gotten to up until now, and she needs her passport. Well, I don't know. Why, the, why are the people who are there continuing to be there and to be drawing salaries if they're not doing... Right. They need capable to of doing the show work. them out and get that. persons who are interested in the job. Yes. And who take people's interest at Anyway, look here. Hold on and I'll ask somebody to take the information from you. Okay? Okay. We have to go now. It's time for the news. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back here online. Uh, and we go back to the telephones. Hello? Hello. Good day, Mr. Perkins. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. And how are you, sir? Not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I heard a lady call earlier on that she was living in New York. Uh huh. And she she's now back home and how she loves her country. I don't think I will come back there to live. I don't, not a matter of think. I know I won't come back there to live. Oh? 
for their in Jamaica. I don't think I will come back there to live. I don't, not a matter of think. I know I won't come back there to live. Oh? Why? No, I wouldn't come back there to live. Why? The longest I would come and stay in Jamaica is 10 days. 10 days the most. Are you serious? I would never come back. They, they, they would have to be some drastic change. You know, day before yesterday, Mr. Perkins, I, w I walked out on the street and there was a little man. A what? One man. There was a what? And I don't know what that man was doing. But when I looked, it was a 2006 Nissan Maxima, a 2006 Ford um, Dodge, Dodge Caravan, and a big um, one of those custom 150 van Ford, and another van drove up, and all those vehicles had two police inside of it. And where where was, was it? Called in the most where was know? this? This was in New York here. Uh huh. In New York. Uh -huh. And this is the man, he was called in a most decent manner and was properly searched. Properly searched. I don't know what he did. And then everything was explained to him and he was handcuffed very timely and quietly, put into the van and then drove off. Uh -huh. Over there in Jamaica, if, if, if I know that if so much vehicle come down on you, go and shut a fire and you go and get robbed too. Police. So that um, the day, you should have asked that. Yes, the police, have have take, said, the police would have accosted him. He would have taken. I said the police would have accosted them, sir. He would have taken out a gun and, and pointed it at them, or fired a shot. They would have returned you, you, the, returned the fire, and he would have been I, found suffering from gunshot wounds, taken to yes, the hospital. Yes, I know. I know. Where he would have been pronounced. But over here, not. Everybody had their guns, but there was not one police with a, with a gun in, in hand. Uh -huh. All the guns were on the jacket. You see, and the little man, he had a bag. Yes. You should ask that lady if she would encourage her grandchildren to come to Jamaica to live. They won't do it because I, I'm not doing it. And I have two, two, two children over here, and I'm sure they won't be coming back to Jamaica to live. As, as a matter of fact, they won't come there to live. When the Prime Minister so, was recently in New York, did you, were you at that meeting? If I did what, sir? When, I think the Prime Minister was recently in New York. Oh, Prime Minister. Mr. Perkins, when them people that come in New York, is a chosen few go there, sir, because I let me know who to ask the Prime Minister certain questions, they're not going to invite me. I see. You see, because, you know, she would, I would ask her if, uh, Explain certain things that I know she wouldn't do it either. But are you a member of the um, Diaspora Association up there? No, no Mr. Perkins. <laughs> no? Them things that I hear, them people that talk about it best, for and this and that, and the devil knows what. Uh -huh. Them people that support certain system I'm in, in a year, sir. So you have severed all your connect links to Jamaica? No, no, I come to Jamaica every year, you know. Eh? Every year I come to Jamaica, you know, Yes. Sometimes I'll two times a year, but I'm not spending just, more than 10 just years out here. Just as a tourist. Just as a tourist, boss. I don't come in, I don't, me, I wouldn't come there to live, boss, not at all. I would have never come out there to talk about live. Why? Why? Out there, out there wicked, boss. I mean, out there wicked, I hear it, I feel it. Out there wicked. I know it. I used to live there, boss. Uh-huh. I lived in Jamaica for like, um, for part of two years. I was born there, I was grown there. Uh-huh. Part of two years. I recently left Jamaica, like, six years ago I left Jamaica, come uh -huh. here. Uh-huh. And when I opened my cupboard right now, the amount that, um, tin things I seen, the beef, mackerel, sardine, and when I opened the fridge, the amount of meat tonight, I couldn't have Jamaica and have them things, boss. You see, because first thing they're not going to give me a good job out there. I wouldn't get a good job out there. And all them, the, the, the police, the corruption and uh, police, I feel the hands of them out there, you know. You I feel, feel the hands? hands of the, I feel the hands of the police out there from corruption. Oh, yes? Yeah, I feel it. it. So I, Tell me about I, that. That's me the man in a, in a, in a prison, innocently. You ended up in prison? Me. Huh? From, 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 me. Tell me about from it. From the no? general penitentiary, from the general penitentiary to gun court. Yes. I end up there innocently, innocent of the top woman I know about. 
I don't know about. And the policeman who said was go prison was one of the wickedest man because the man know me and I don't know anything about the man. And the man come out and tell a liar me. And the judge sentenced me. You see? And I want to tell you, say, I must go nine years in spend a prison where we could have come out. You spent nine years in prison? Nine years to spend a prison bond before we come out. Then how you it's manage not, to get to the U United yeah. States? I, if, if people come back down the bar, anyhow them can say me have to come back and do me to come live. Me not coming alive. With the body coming out there in our back to bury. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Have a good day. All right, sir. Thank you okay. very much. What a declaration. We take a break. We come back shortly. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Hello? Good day, Mr. Perkins. Good day to you, sir. How, how are you, sir? Not too bad. How are you? Not, not too bad. All uh -huh. the best for the season. Huh? All the best for the season, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Good. Same uh, to you. We have a problem. The West, the person of Westchester, Portmore Drive, to be exact. Uh -huh. um, for the last three weeks, no garbage has been taken up. Uh oh. We call the parish council. They said they're busy with it. It's, it's national solid waste. Because solid waste, they said they're going to investigate it. They have to investigate it? Yeah, they, they said they're going to investigate it. Uh -huh. And three weeks now, the garbage on Portmore Drive, Westchester, has uh -huh. been taken up. And every yard full of uh, uh, garbage. Okay. So we are contemplating to block the road uh, between now and Monday uh -huh. if it's not taken up. You're going to block the road? Yeah, we're going to block the road. The citizens are going to block because Well, I it, hope that won't be necessary. You know, because it, but the garbage is stinks, Mr. Perkins. It stinks. The entire Portmore Drive, Westchester side has not been taken up. Yes. And we all pay taxes. Yes, you do. And if you don't give a driver them a money, them don't want to take up your rubbish. If you give them money, they, they will take up, them take up the next side of the road. Uh-huh. And it cannot be. So I don't know what... what do, we, do you think it possible, sir? Yes, sir. That the... That the... Environment in which the... The area in which the Prime Minister... Or Dr. Davis, the Minister of Finance... Or Dr. Phillips... Or any Minister of the Government... Including the Minister in charge of the National Solid Waste Management Authority. You think I, any one of those houses in which they live and the houses around them could have been in that condition over Christmas? No, they have... Cause they have or at any other time of the year? No, they have, cause they have special people who look out for them and make sure the truck goes to their... Oh, I see. ...era and get it clean. Uh-huh. They, 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 they don't recognize us until it comes to tax time. You see, they, say, they send out as in the paper that pay your property tax because it provides lights, garbage, etc., etc. Uh -huh. But you, you're not getting the service. So we, where the money is going? And we don't pay the, 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 the taxes. We, we have problem with them. Yes. So I don't know what, what assistance you can do for us. <laughs> But oh, Lord. The, the, the resident of Westchester, Port you Port pay the Bay, taxes. We are in problem. You don't get the service, do you? Good. And we have to pay every year. Yes. Yes. So, see so what you can do for me, Mr. Perkins, and, and all the best. And, okay. Uh, What's the name of the road? Portmore Drive, Westchester. Portmore Drive, Drive in Westchester. Westchester scheme. Uh -huh. That entire stretch of road. Okay. The garbage has not been taken up. The National Solid Waste Management Authority. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Well, they must have been sleeping over the Christmas. Um, they are investigating the reason why eh? it's not been... They are investigating, so maybe they, they were sleeping, so they start to investigate today. <laughs> so they're wake, they have been waking up now. Oh, boy. For us. Uh, all right. All right, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All the best. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, yes. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Is this Mr. Perkins? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was just referring to that man. I'm, I'm calling from Canada. I was just referring to that man that lives in the States. That what? The man that lives in the States that just called you. Oh, the one that said that he would, that he would no way come back to Jamaica. Yes. Uh-huh. To live. In, in full, you know... Eh? I love Jamaica, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. 
And I leave Jamaica and live here now, and I love Jamaica. And no matter what the crime they have down there, I still would go down to my country, believe, because that's where I was born. Yes. Yeah, so maybe. that man full of it. And by the way, how comes him have nine years in a prison and him get, and him living? I in was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. I asked him, but he ignored the question. Yeah. No, that man is full of it. S still, I he's lucky. I come to Jamaica every year. Eh? I come to Jamaica heavy here. Well, he says he comes here too. And I don't have a problem too. down here. He says he comes here too. Pardon me? Pardon me? I say he says he comes here too. Yeah. But, but he is also saying, Mom, that the opportunities that he has in the United States he would never have here. He talked about uh, hmm. the stuff in his kitchen and his fridge. You can know. hardly hear you. I say he talked about um, what his, his refrigerator in his kitchen contained and said that he would never have, never been in that position had he been in Jamaica. He wouldn't mm -hmm. have a good job. And he talked oh, about really? the way the police treat, treat people in America and as mm -hmm. against, um, or in New York, as against mm -hmm. what they do here in Jamaica. Oh, well, that in that in that year, it's kind of true because the police them here they deal with people differently, but that don't say nothing still, you know. I don't because, say nothing. You know, huh? I don't say nothing. No, because you know, in a foreign country, or you know, it's different from in the Caribbean. So different you know? how? Huh? How different? It's different. This is the way all the people them talk to the people. Them, it's different. Yes. In Jamaica now. They show respect. In, in, they show res yes, respect they show, for people they, in. Yes, they show more respect. In yes. America. Yes. Than they do here in Jamaica. So you yes, agree with them on it, that? No, I'm not, no. I, yeah, I agree with him with, in, on that point. Uh -huh. But when I'm talking about he will never come back to Jamaica to live. Yes. And until then, but he will then never if, come if back. This, That's crap. Hold on. If the story mm -hmm. that he's telling is true, that mm -hmm. a policeman framed him mm -hmm. and caused him to be locked up in prison for nine years, mm -hmm. um, would you blame him for feeling the way he does? Well, it all depends on when, because he's not the truth. No, well, I don't know. You and you're in no position to say that he's not speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. um, we have in Jamaica mm -hmm. a police force that is admittedly mm -hmm. corrupt. Mm -hmm. Right? The two yeah. commissioners, um, Mr. Forbes and mm -hmm. the present commissioner, Mr. Tom, mm -hmm. th Mr. Thomas, um, mm -hmm. have themselves said that the mm -hmm. police force is corrupt. Yes. Right? But the so police... But the if, police no, no, but hold on. If uh -huh. it is true that the police force is corrupt and uh -huh. we are getting that information from uh -huh. the levels of the commissioner, uh -huh. how can you dismiss what that man is saying in this arbitrary well, way? Mr. Perkins, the police, the, police commission, the police foundation on a whole in Canada and America, is one of them corrupt because you have good and bad. Uh-huh. The whole of them corrupt. Oh, is that so? Yes. But the commissioners in you America... You have good and, and bad, you know. Eh? You remember you have good and bad, you know. You yes, I know. You have good and you have bad weed. But you also have systems that... Um, uh -huh. Systems that support the bad and other systems uh -huh. that support the good. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. And in some places, if you're caught doing the kind of corrupt things that police are said to do here, then mm -hmm. the consequences would be serious for you. But yeah. here in Jamaica, the chances of you being caught is not all that great. And if... Well, and if eh? well that is kind of true still, but let me tell you the truth. They have corrupt police here too, and they all uh -huh. weed out. Yes. But you like you know, the sight they, they of the blue mountains. They have whistleblower, whistleblower that blow, that, that just talk things, uh -huh. you know, keep it for a while and then everything just come out in open, yes. you know. Uh -huh. So, and the same thing I go on to Jamaica too. 
Well, I don't know that that is going on here. I don't know how much is coming out in the open. But what about that, that policeman who confessed? Well, you notice, in, uh, he, uh, you notice he kept what? his own name out of it. I wonder they why. They do what? Eh? They do what? You notice that he kept his own name out uh -huh. of it. He didn't tell us his name. His name. Yeah, I read it. I read it. Huh? I read it. Yeah, I read it. I read yes. the article, yeah. So maybe he was, you know, afraid of what the consequences might have been had he yes. spoken, had he identified himself. But maybe, maybe, he, maybe he's a clean one, but he's just talking about what he has seen. Uh, yes, Maybe so he, he's so referring he to what he has seen and known. Uh, well, he spoke about what he was involved in, okay. things that he were in, was involved in, right? But okay. that is only one part of the problem. I mean, the other part has to do with economic opportunities, okay. right? And um, the, well, I, I, I should have mentioned the availability of justice in Jamaica. Uh, you know, people are complaining about that. But no. if you are a Jamaican and committed I, I to I don't Jamaican, have no fault. I don't have, it's my country and I was born here. Uh -huh. And no matter what, yes. we still love my country. Yes, all right. We still love my country. Uh -huh. I'm in Nigeria because we live in a foreign country. I'm to give her Jamaica and uh -huh. slam Jamaica. That's where I was born. That's where my root is. Yes. So me not doing no foreign country. So why no, why are you thing. living abroad now? Well, it's just one of those things that it just happened that we just live abroad. Oh yeah. You know, I just that. But why? If you love Jamaica, why aren't yeah, you? We love here? Jamaica. Eh? We love Jamaica. Yes, I love Jamaica, and I'm thinking of retiring and coming back to Jamaica uh -huh. to live. In how many years? And even to invest in Jamaica because I love it. Oh, yes? Yes. Uh-huh. All right. Well. Yes. Okay. So you take care. But I, I, you still haven't told me why you live. Uh -huh. Why you live in Canada? Why I live in Canada? Uh-huh. Because my family them sent to me, so I just live up because here. Because what? With my family them. Because uh -huh. I have family that sends for me, so I just live here. Uh -huh. I never have any control over that. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. yeah, You're a little girl. I, if I was a little girl? You're a little girl now. No, 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 I'm a big woman. A big woman? No. Yeah. You, you, you know, can come anytime, buy a your line ticket and come anytime? If I can do what? You can just buy an airline ticket. Jump yes. on the plane. And, and come anytime. Yes, that's come what back I to say. Jamaica. I come to Jamaica every year. I was there in May. Yes, but then you go back to Canada. Yes, I go back because this is where I live, but I still love Jamaica. I see. I you see. Know? I thought you wanted to, you're in a hurry to come back home, man. Uh, yes, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry, but I'm flowing and I'm in a hurry. If you I, know what I mean, I'm I flowing and I'm in a hurry. I follow what you mean. So. Okay. All right. All the best to you. So you take care. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful new year. Uh, thank you. And the very same thank to you. you. Uh, hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. How are you? Not too bad. Mm, that's good. This is Alan Beckford calling from the Jamaica Automobile Association. Uh -huh. Alan? Beckford. Beckford. Right. I'm uh -huh. the general manager here. I thought it'd be appropriate to call you today because yesterday there was a, a collision on the highway uh -huh. um, which was caused by faulty tires and it's something that, of course, at the Automobile Association, road safety is one of our major concerns. Uh -huh. You may have known that last year about 30 percent of the collisions on the highway were caused by faulty tires. So I'm not calling for us to, you know, in Jamaica maybe to to check out tires and really be more careful when they're driving. We have a program now currently that is in in going on, which is called Think Before You Drive, which basically we have we are distributing 500,000 liters. Hold, hold, hold on just a moment for me, just. Hold. 
Okay, thank you very much. Back here online. Hello? Yes, as I was saying to you, at the Automobile Association, yes. we are very concerned about this problem, in particular with the highway, because what has happened is, is that vehicles in Jamaica typically wouldn't be driving at the speeds that they can now on the highway, and there are a couple of issues that motorists need to look out for. Uh-huh. Is this that, for example, tires that are not properly inflated? Sometimes we don't think that it's a faulty tire, but a number of, oh, you know, motorists have tires that are underinflated or they're overinflated. Yes. Or many a time the tires are just not in good condition. So what we have done is, as, as a, uh, in association with our international body, we have actually been distributing tire gauges and thread depth gauges. Um, they are free of cost at our offices as well. What are these? Tire? Tire gauges, air, tire pressure gauges. Yes. Thread depth gauge. So what it does, you one allows you to t- test the pressure in your tire to make sure it has the manufacturer's re- recommended air pressure. Uh-huh. And also it tells whether or not you have enough of, of threading on the tire left. In other words, it is, is the tire in good condition. So uh-huh. it measures both things. And we have actually got a hundred thousand that we have been distributing over the last six months. We, we have maybe an extra 30,000 left that we have been doing through offices and through different programs, through the Ministry of Transport, the National Road Safety Council. But we're just appealing to motorists to really check your tires and also the season. Basically, we have a program called Think Before You Drive. Yes. That we have also been distributing half a million leaflets through a number of outlets, including the JGRA stations as well, to ask the motorists to pick them up. Because sometimes, you see, Mr. Perkins, maybe that drive on a I'm not saying because it's alleged, of course, so we don't know categorically. But in, in cases, sometimes to save $3,000 on a new tire, end up that you get into this major collision that may cause fatalities. It might also, it might not even be that major. It might cost you $10,000 and you have no use of your car for, for two weeks. So yes. we're just asking people to think before they drive. Yes. And if they want, they want, you know, gauges, they can get them from our offices. And what we have also. Where are these offices? Our office is 10 to 12 Grenada Crescent, third floor of the Jamaica National Building. Uh-huh. Um, that's the Jamaica Automobile Association. And what we have also noticed, because we offer roadside assistance island-wide, not only for for breakdowns, but also for accidents. And we have noticed that over the Christmas, the rate has just gone through the through the roof. And a lot of it is just caused by a person speeding. And as I said, they don't think before you before yes. you, you drive. Yes. I mean, yesterday was just a classic example. If that person had just checked it, because you see a lot of persons don't know also that you check your air pressure in the morning when the tire is cold. Um, and you look at your manufacturers, you know, recommended air pressure, and you yes. check them. A lot of persons in actual fact check them when the tires are hot. Also, what is happening is with, over, with an overinflated tire driving at, you know, these guys are driving at 150 kilometers, 170 kilometers on the highway. It's what we have never had in Jamaica. So it's, our tires have never gone through the stress of what it has had to go through before. Can you imagine? But hold on. What is the speed limit on the highway? It's 110 kilometers. 107? No, 110 kilometers. 110 so. kilometers. Right. That is and they're length. driving at 170. Well, when I'm on the road at a, going at 100, 110, and they're flying by me, and I, they become a dot in no time. Clearly, they're going, <laughs> they're going much faster than the, than the speed limit. And the thing is, is that at that speed, as you can imagine, that's if, you know, for us who don't know miles per hour, that's 100 miles per hour. I mean, at that speed, they're really at the mercy of the Lord. I mean, that 170 is about a, a 100 miles an hour. 100, 160 kilometers is roughly. 100, and 100 miles an hour. And you think people are driving at 100 miles an hour? That's not an uncommon thing on the on the highway. I mean, I'm sure if there were gauges there, I know the, the ministry is going to be on a number of roads, have some new sensors that can tell how fast you can, you, you're, you're driving up. But one of the other things, Mr. Perkins, while we're on this, there are a couple of pieces of legislation that, you know, the new road traffic act that have been worked on. And we also are very concerned about the pace that we which a number of these things are happening at because there's also, I don't know, remember a couple of months ago that there is now a new thing that the police have to issue summons, as I think it is, for careless or reckless driving because they can't issue a ticket on the spot. Uh-huh. Um, these are issues that we're just hoping that the authorities can address in a more timely manner because 
Uh, you're probably not aware, but fatalities this year is, has increased significantly. I think we were up at the start of December, about 45 over last year. Uh-huh. And the whole issue of road safety, as a matter of fact, we also have a program, a new program that will be launched in the new year called Make Road Safe, which is a program, which is an international program. And some of the statistics that I think will be very interesting, every day there are approximately 3,000 persons who die per year in, in, in the world, and that's on the scale of malaria and TB. Um, there are other things like, for example, 500 children die on the roads every year, um, I mean every day, and about 96% of them are in the low middle income countries. There's over 300,000 children a year that are killed because we're actually going to be having a petition which is going to be between all automobile associations in the world. We're trying to see that of all development budgets for roads, at least 10% of it is is reserved for road safety. Because I just give an example of it. We built the highway from Portmore to Kingston, but no bicycle lane was put in. How are the cyclists going to get from Portmore to Kingston? Hence, they, they ride on the highway, which clearly I don't have to tell you how safe it is. So these are things that we need to look at before we, you know, we do roads. There are simple things like putting in roundabouts on a road. It uh-huh. makes it safer than having a four-way intersection, putting a median in the road. These things reduce fatalities by 80 to 90 percent. So these are things that we'll also be doing. What about flyovers and underpasses? Well, clearly all of these reduce fatalities by, I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous amount that they, they reduce them by. So this is something that we're going to be petitioning, getting a petition signed. It's a worldwide petition. There are clubs in over 120 countries in the world. Similar to, to us, as I said, we are part of the FIA. Um, so it's something that we are very concerned about. It, it is, it's, and as, as you will be aware, it, it affects the lower to middle income countries more significantly than, mm-hmm. than anywhere else in the world. I mm-hmm. mean, the rate, I said, as I said, in countries like ours, is probably 10 times the rate of the first world countries when it comes down to road fatalities yes. per, per, per capita. I mean, mm-hmm. you're talking about road crashes cost between 64.5 to 100 billion every year. <laughs> I mean, the total global crashes cost more than 500 billion a year. So it's something that I think we really need to get serious about. As a matter of fact, it's for, for killing young, I should say, road traffic fatalities for young men worldwide. It's the second biggest killer to AIDS. I mean, people don't know that. So it's something that, as I said, yes. us at the Automobile Association, we're also trying to push through the National Road Safety Council for legislation to change, as you know, the legislation needs significant look. It has, it has got the significant look. It's just a matter now to be passed through the different houses and the different offices. But sometimes in Jamaica, I can tell you, getting it through the, the process seems to be take a lot longer than one, yes, if I Im- yes. imagine. But um, we're just asking, you know, for you also at times to, you know, to mention some yes. of these, these facts. Tell me something. What about the effect upon tires of driving on badly potholed roads and so on? Well, that's a significant issue as well, too, because what happens many a times with our cars in Jamaica is that the suspension gets such a hard time that when your suspension is not in good condi- condition, it also causes your tires to wear at a far more rapid rate. Yes. So it's, it's really what comes first, the chicken or the egg. You, uh-huh. you get your poor suspensions, you, get, you end up tire, the tire wear being significantly shorter than it would be in, in a country that has good roads. So that yes. is something also that I've spoken to. I mean, for example, there's a pothole on Hope Road. I don't know if you know, just above the, well, in front of Jamaica House, just above this <laughs> main gate. That, I mean, every time a car comes down the road, it swerves to the right lane. Yes. Cars don't drive at the recommended speed limit on that road, clearly. And I mean, if a car swerves there, it's, it's just simple things like these that we need to look at. Yes. And this is the thing about the whole program that we're, we're a part of for 2007 called Safe Roads. Uh-huh. It's like a light pole that is, is, is badly positioned on a road. Side uh-huh. impacts, as you can imagine, are far worse because you have no padding on the side. It's just a door beside But safe it. roads cannot be roads studded with potholes. Well, clearly not, and that is why they rate roads. I'm not sure what all roads are rated, but they rate roads as a scale of rating roads. And um, mm-hmm. one of the things that I'm hoping is that we can get an audit done in Jamaica, but I think I, I know the result of it before. And let me yeah. tell you something. 
there is a disguised pothole. I think it's on Waterloo Road. When you're coming down from somewhere in the region of the Terranova Hotel, on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. Right? It's asphalted. But if you're coming along and, and dropping it, right? Right. You feel the, the effects are not unlike uh, well, falling into a pothole. Right. See, Mr. Perkins, uh, I'm convinced that in the last year we have got a new breed of potholes because they used to be very wide but not that deep. Now, many of them are not that wide but very deep. Yes. Which are clearly a lot worse than the old-time ones that are a lot wider. But, you know, we... we uh, try we try as best as we can, as I said, in our representation because we are advocates for road users and as part of the membership of the JAA. When our members have problems, we take it to you know a different council and uh -huh. and try to represent as best as possible to to get these problems sorted out. So we we are hoping that in the new year the minister will be able to do something about the roads, at least the major roads. That, that one travel and have the highest volume of traffic to have the potholes repaired, you know, in, as quickly as possible. I mean, yes. there was a major fatality. Well, we were told, were we not, that Jamaica would be pothole-free by 2003? Well, um... Where are we now? 2000, <laughs> 2001? Nearly seven. <laughs> <God> <laughs> hold on a moment there. for me. Okay. Hold, hold on. Okay, thank you. We're back with you, sir. Hello? Yes, yes. A, a moment ago, you mentioned Hope Road. Right. And it reminded me of a call that I got from a lady who lives um, in the vicinity of Hope Road. Uh, about one day earlier this week, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and she was telling me that, um, that the racing... Remember, there have been a couple of accidents. Right, right. Quite serious accidents on that road. I actually heard that caller when she came on. Yes. It's something that, um, that I have previously brought to the attention. I was that. amazed to hear that it was still going on. Well, what happens is I think what she's saying is, is, is quite correct because actually where I live is not that far from from Hope Road. I live in the, you know, in the Ligonet area. And yes. I also... I also can hear those engines at, at different times of night. And another thing I do is that I'm, I'm a runner. And the most frightening thing is when you're running on the morning at, in the morning at 4.30, 5 o'clock, and the uh -huh. cars are coming by at a ridiculous speed. But that brings back... Now, what are, what are these? Just somebody driving fast or a it's, race going on? I think it's a combination of both of them, but I wouldn't know officially. But when we're speaking on these, on that particular issue, there, there comes back to another issue that we are not addressing, and that is, um, you know, the, the proper machines to test your alcohol levels, uh -huh. which we don't have anything, any of them really function in Jamaica. And yes. I think to think that we don't have them, we need to seriously look at it. Also, the uh -huh. level that is by law um, that you're allowed to, you know, the level in Jamaica, which I think is 0.35 or 0 0.035, Whatever it is, at, at that level, the experts would tell you that you're almost drunk already. Oh, is that so? so and well, that is something that is also being addressed to change. But I don't, I mean, I one day, Mr. Perkins, on my road, there was a gentleman in the middle of the road at about 6 o'clock in the morning, stone drunk asleep at his steering wheel with a car running, uh -huh. running, turned on. And this was about a month and a half ago. Uh -huh. Car running, his head stomped over the steering wheel. For his sake, his, his foot was on the brake because uh, I called the police. The police came and it took him how long to wake up and he was clearly stone drunk, advertising one of our popular nightclubs and clearly it would have taken 
you know, a non-genus to tell her that he must have been under the intoxication. Uh -huh. Now, what can the police do? Because the police have no equipment to test him. They did a good job by driving his car away and not allowing him to drive. But the fact of the matter is this, that um, they have no equipment to test him. How did he get from New Kingston to Ligonier? I mean, there's a famous story years ago of a alleged person who knocked somebody down who, can, who never realized they knocked them down because they were so stone drunk. And uh -huh. if we're not doing something about it, but... I mean, this is a very serious issue. What does this cost us? The equipment can be more than 2 million U.S. We find 2 million U.S. to spend on a lot of other popular ventures that are, are about to happen in Jamaica. So, uh -huh. for us to find two, I don't think the equipment can cost more than 2 or 3 million U.S. If it even costs 5 million, look at the impact. And what we need to do is a lot of these fellows who are racing on the road are also highly intoxicated as well, too. Yes. So Speaking of which, I... I heard on the news that um, the former heavyweight champion, what's his name, um, Bur who Tyson or Burbick? Uh, the no, no, the the mad one. What's his name? Tyson, Mike Tyson, Tyson yes, Mike Tyson. Um, he um, he has been arrested for drunken driving. Okay, okay. Well, I never forget when I used to live in New York that the commissioner of the basketball league at the time, um, or was it the Knicks, whatever, president, when I was even in New York, they stopped him and, and they, they get charged for it. Uh -huh. I can remember in one of my past when I was away, I used to remember every Sunday morning you would see the fellows leaving, leaving the jail in the town because they had been all sweeped up. They used to do a major sweep every Saturday night take everybody off the road who was driving while intoxicated and I think this is what we need to do and I know the senior Sufu really wants to get this back on the road but clearly he doesn't have the resources well, to uh, equipment uh, to do it no but I mean he doesn't write the checks but for who are listening who have the the capacity to write these checks, I would, uh, you know, we would really, we, as I said, because us at the JAA, we have all members on the road. We are offering island-wide assistance. You know, we do, we provide security at the roadside. You know, and not only that too. We have to remember that we are part of an international program of reciprocity to, between clubs. For example, from just the AAA alone, we probably have half a million to 600,000 members of their club who come to Jamaica who we service as well once they require some service. So it's not only about our product, product, it's also the tourism product as well. So because as I said, once you become a member of our club, if you are traveling to the States as well, to England, you get full reciprocity benefits from those clubs. So yes. one of my concerns is this, that even when we're telling them what the services is, sometimes we're afraid to mention too much about the security to frighten them. But we offer, we offer response security at the roadside as well. So, so if you break down, not only our team comes to you, but we also have a, have Atlas Security now brings the arm response team to make sure you're secure. So these are, so as I said to you, it's, it's, you know, all, program is, is rather widespread so this is why we you know we really are concerned when we see things like this happening and we really don't see major improvements i yes. think some of the major things if we can get some of the legislation changed and, and also some some monitoring of some of these major issues on the road uh -huh. you know so have, i mean how close is your relationship with the police and we, we sit on councils and as a matter of fact we have, in the, we have just coordinated a program because we are actually also, Jamaica National is a subsidiary, we are a subsidiary as well and we have coordinated where we have been able to assist with, for example, the school's pedestrian program, we have given them major assistance with that. So we also, for example, the leaflets that we give out, they have got done a good job because I know as a matter of fact um, a member who got caught speeding got one of these think before you drive um, booklets at the same time. So they do a fantastic job, and we work very closely with them as well through their, you know, Sergeant Clark, Senior Superintendent, Elon Powell, you know, Sergeant Affleck. So we, we have a very close relationship with them as well, and we try where possible to give what assistance we can do. And they, they try, you know, to assist. They have a very good program going through the schools. They cover many a school in Jamaica with their school's pedestrian program. I don't know if you know about it, uh -huh. which is a program now which they take um, 
they simulate a roadside situation. They take uh, model cars, um, they take model pedestrian crossings, set them up in the schools, and that is to help with pedestrian, pedestrians, in particular, you know, younger kids like in primary schools, because that, in actual fact, is one of the areas that we have not done very well this year when it comes on to fatalities. We're at a pretty high level when it comes on to pedestrian fatalities. Also, they also have a program which they go out and speak whenever you need them. They, I went to a presentation in Montego Bay, which was, which was excellent. And it's just a matter of probably of their resources of being able to get out to groups. Because the thing about road safety is not something that you can have, for example, not to say it's not good to have a road safety month, but uh-huh. it's something that has to be ongoing. Yes, it has indeed. to be in people's well, look place here. every day. You've noticed that the, the, the problems with pedestrians... Um, Everybody these days is jaywalking. I mean, people are driving cars without and vehicles without regard for the law, and people are walking without regard for the that law. Is a, that is a very good point, Mr. And it, it's particularly the case with school children. Well, this is why this program is so important, and there's also a program I know we had. I think National Road Safety Council had a few years ago where children are taught to put up their hands at the pedestrian crossing. But just on that, that mention, NWA, I know, is in the process of a major program where proper signs will be put on all the existing pedestrian crossings and they're going to be repainted. I know they have a corporate body who has sponsored that island-wide, so hopefully that will be fully implemented shortly, which will help at least letting persons know where these pedestrian crossings are. And with the wonderful work, as I said, with the schools program, uh-huh. we have now been fully equipped Well, in another couple of days, they'll be fully equipped with, they'll be able to more effectively go into the, the schools. So that will hopefully help with that as well. Too. Yes. But do you know, the, the, um, the school children have learned, I suppose, that they, and pedestrians generally, and people driving motor cars, that the law is not a shackle. So if it well, is not a shackle... I think, I, think, I think the point of that is that, that clearly, one, the legislation needs to be, be, you know, become a bit more current, and the second thing is it just needs more, more enforcement. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you don't have Absolutely. the enforcement, I never forget um, going to Paris for the World Cup and uh-huh. listening to the statistics that there's almost a policeman on every corner in Paris. Yes. Sometimes we tend to look at statistics but don't really break them down and we say that somebody gets knocked down on the road, maybe in England, but the fact is that for everyone that gets knocked down there per capita, we may be at 8 or 10. It's the same with murders. Yes. When that one gets there, we're still at 8 or 10 times per capita because that's really what tells the story. Yes, indeed. And as I said to you, with the whole Make Road Safe program, unfortunately, it's countries like ours. When you start to work out the numbers, oh, oh, fatalities is ridiculous when you compare per, you know, per million versus other first world countries. And there's no good reason why this should be so. One of the other issues I think that needs to be seriously addressed is, is that the motor vehicles that come to Jamaica, we need to ensure that they have certain safety features. As far as I know, the only thing that we really require in a car, besides basic things like lights and which, of course, are safety, are, are seat belts. But certain things, for example, side impact bags, front impact bags, what speed does a bumper take, what, what side of side, side bars are in the doors, you know, for, for side impact, you know, to make sure they're headrest in the car, because that's another thing with OP, or, or, or program, which for the road, without think before you drive booklets, one of the things it emphasizes is your headrest. How many persons in Jamaica don't think the headrest is there for comfort when the headrest is really there to prevent whiplash? I know. Every time you go into a new car, you should adjust that headrest, or if it has been adjusted, you need to to adjust it. Things like, for example, child safety seats. If you see people driving around with children, children in their lap, in a collision, the weight of that child can increase by up to 20 times, which means that if you had a 20 pound child in your lap, and you were in a collision, that child will be 400 pounds. There yes, are not many indeed. people that will ever be able to and hold it. So the child on. catapults out of the, out of the car. Yes. Um, and we, how many people in Jamaica know that everybody in the car is supposed to wear seatbelts? It's uh-huh. not only the front persons in the front. Many a times in the collisions, it's the persons in the back who fly out. And if yes. they had had their seatbelts on, 
that would have prevented it. So these are things, as I said, that we emphasize. Um, we're giving away, as I said, the free gauges. We give away these booklets. They're right, available. So thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. And I thank you very all much. The best all the best, Mr. Oh. Perkins. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here uh, with you, and we have with us uh, Mr. David Wonken. Hi, Wilmot. Who is a, a lawyer and many other things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he seems to be... Um, exercised at the moment about the uh, what's it called the well to be truthful international access fund right I was catching up this to it. I was catching up this morning on some of the, the newspapers that I have not had a chance to read yes um, and came across this article which befuddles me I don't I don't understand it it um, appears in the business section of the Gleaner Wednesday December 27 2006 uh-huh. and the headline says Paul Well backtracks, rescinds order for direct payment to Universal Access Fund. And I haven't heard anyone comment on it, and I really wondered yes, I, what I, it was I, about. I, I missed that one. Well, <clears throat> it might be instructive and, and help to put things in context if I just read the first, what, two, three paragraphs. Yes, uh-huh, go ahead. It reads, Technology Minister Philip Paulwell last week stepped back from plans to direct payment of the Universal Service levy directly to the Universal Access Fund company in the face of criticism. Industry players argued that by circumventing terminating carriers, which now collect the cess from international call carriers, Polwell would further fog the situation surrounding non-payment of the tax for a year by at least one carrier. Polwell, several weeks ago, had instructed local telecoms through a ministerial order that the requirement that terminating carriers shall collect payment of the levy from the interconnect customers is hereby suspended and such payments are to be made directly to the UAFC, that's a Universal Access Fund. Uh-huh. Um, it's also instructive to, to hear, the, the paper goes on to say, to date the fund has 2.3 billion in collections and receivables and by Paul Wells estimation should make 4.2 billion by the end of its tenure in June 2008. Uh-huh. So, <clears throat> what bothers me is, here it is, you have a fund that presently contains $2.3 billion that seems to respond to directions by the Minister of Information and Technology uh-huh. or Industry without, it seems, any oversight at all. By Parliament. By Parliament or the Minister of Finance. You know... I, I keep saying on this program that that is what caused King Charles to lose his head. Well. Right? The belief that he, as king, had the right to tax the people of Britain and to spend the money without parliamentary approval. Well, that, that and, and we may yet lose some heads in 2007, <laughs> I don't know. But, Wilmot, it raises, it provokes a number of things. Obviously, one, how does this minister or any minister have such seemingly unilateral control uh-huh. over that kind of money? Was it $2.3 billion? Presently. And rising. And rising. Uh-huh. The, the CES, <laughs> how, it works, it, that I, how it works, I understand, is that calls that are terminated in Jamaica uh-huh. um, attract assess by the, by the carrier. Yes. Digicel, Cable and Wireless, People's Telecom. Yes. And for landlines, that says it's three cents per call, U.S. cents. Yes. And for mobile phones, it's two cents, U.S. cents per two, call. Two cents. U.S. Uh-huh. So you can imagine, I mean, we use telephones. I mean, Roger Clark told us that we have two phones. Two in the back pocket. That's right. So you, you can imagine I the amount of money. I one and call the, the next one and say hello. And every time he does that, <laughs> it attracts two cents. <laughs> but the point is, this, just to give you an idea, Wilmot, this... Fund was set up by P.J. Patterson. Yes. June 2005. Uh huh. Since then, it has accumulated 2.3 billion Jamaican 2005. dollars. 2005. What time in 2005? June 1st. June 1st. Yeah. The fund that's which was created and, last year. That's a year and six months. Right. And if you uh, rec- am I right? No, no. Yes. Yes, just a, a year and six months, roughly. And, and if you recall, the fund was set up for uh-huh. e-learning in schools. Uh huh. 
You know, there were all these grandiose plans about people or, or children learning by, by video conferences. They would do away with the blackboard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, that's a little over $2 billion a year. Right? Yes. Oh, boy, that's nice. Right, and Mr. So Paul will, can decide what to do with that. Seemingly so. Uh-huh. And that's bothersome. Uh-huh. Um, I recall... Did Sister P say that um, her campaign fund was going to be provided by the poor? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, Wilmot, whether or not any hanky-panky has gone on. That's for Mr. A.G. Um, to find out. Um, the term is not hanky-panky. It's anky-panky. Anky-panky. Coming from the highest sources. All right, but my concern, the Wilmot, is, is, is a very serious one. How does any minister have, seemingly have, unilateral control over that kind of money well, where yes. he can, by ministerial dictate, uh-huh. circumvent payments through the carriers and have payments come directly now to the Universal Access Fund? Where would the accountability be? Can he similarly direct payments from the account? From the Universal Access Fund? Yes. Um, well. Is there an accounting of this fund to Parliament? That is the question. Well, Shirley Williams wrote, because when I saw this, I did a little backtrack on the computer. Uh-huh. Shirley Williams says, no, there's no oversight. <laughs> and in fact, Clive Mullins on December 4th, is calling for, for, for parliamentary oversight. But then, is there parliamentary oversight of the expenditure of the um, Petro Caribe? No. Fund? No. <laughs> and these are things, Wilmot, that are huge gaping holes. Yes, yes, yes. That, that will create but these are massive. Public, these are public funds that ministers can direct how to spend and what it to It would do appear with them. so. And. Well, in the case of the Petro Caribe, they make a report up to four months after the end of the financial year, no? Yes. To Parliament. Yes. And, and these are... The Parliament uh, at that point can do damn all about it. And these are funds, Wilma, <laughs> that, that are measures, measured in billions of dollars, not well, millions. we've just been hearing about that. Billions. Yes. I mean, if you remember, the, the North Coast Highway ran over 101 million U.S. Yes. That's billions and billions yes. of Jamaican yes. dollars. Yes. And, and we seem not to be able to get a hold. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, it's like trying to catch smoke. It, no, no. No, no. We don't want to get a hold. The government in particular does not want any hold to be got. Well, it, it would seem not. Right. The, the thing that this article raises for me, though, Wilmot, and it may be totally unconnected, but, but I'd love to have your comment on this. Uh-huh. The, the government dipped into the NHT. Yes. For educational yes. purposes. Yes. The Universal Access Fund was set up for, for educational purposes. Uh-huh. Why didn't we look to those funds first rather than to NHT, which was not set up for education at all? Well, maybe, NH, maybe those funds um, have other de- designs being contemplated for them. Certainly seems so because, I mean, the e-learning project just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Uh-huh. Huh? Yes. And, I mean, education is education. It's better to use that you form remember, that was you set remember up for there education. Was an education tax. I remember there is an education what tax. What happened to it? <laughs> it goes into the consolidated fund. I follow you. <laughs> so and go, goes to balance the budget. But the, the question, though, Wilmot, is I've not heard Dr. Davis speak at all about the Universal Access Fund. Uh-huh. It seems not to uh, be no, on, I, on his radar. Yes, whatsoever. I don't think that anybody wants to make too much noise about it in the government because, um, you know, come the appropriate time they can run with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is dangerous stuff. This is dangerous stuff, Wilmot. What a mess your country is in. So, what, what do you think about this Universal Access Fund, Wilmot? Well, I mean, it, 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 it would seem to me that there is here a great potential for corruption. Well, the question then, I mean, speaking about corruption, and corruption takes many, many forms. Uh-huh. Just to corrupt the process is corruption. But why would Minister Paulwell 
not want the funds to flow through the channels that it was designed to flow through? Why would he want to circumvent the carrier and have the funds paid directly to the Universal Access Fund? That's a question that the article does not contemplate. Well, clearly, Mr. Paulel must have a reason. But I'm trying to figure out what that reason is. Well, um, it's, it might be difficult to come to a conclusion. I mean, there are all sorts of possibilities. Should, shouldn't we ask him, though, Wilmot? I think we should. But is he going to be prepared to come and tell us? Perhaps Mr. Mullins might be able to help us. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. I wonder if we can get Mr. Mullins um, now. Because this article be really does bother me a lot, Wilmot. Yes. And, and I remember hearing a little snippet of, of perhaps gossip or rumor um, related to the, uh, the Universal Access Fund yes. um, concerning some, some refusal by the, the chairman um, in paying some bill or another. Um, I heard it raised by the leader of the opposition, I think, or by Mr. Shaw, I can't remember which, and I'm, uh -huh. I can't remember specifically what it was about, but I remember being concerned about it at the time as it had to do with some lawyer or another, um, and a bill rendered to the fund. Um, I would love to know more about that too, uh -huh. you know? In fact, if, if, if memory serves me correctly, I think the auditor or the contractor general might be looking at this. You, you remember anything about that? The contractor general. Um, I don't know. I, no, I don't remember that specifically. Mm. Well, the auditor general should have an interest in it, too. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly. But, um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll be pretty sort of, you know, directing his statements about it. Um, but the, I don't know. It seems to me that we're... The law is not a shackle, you know, nor is the Constitution. And um, if there is a need to run with it coming up, then maybe that furnishes a reason for, well, for I think, what is happening. I think for those reasons, Wilmot, um, society has to be extra vigilant this year. Yes. And I'm not being partisan when I, when I say that. No. Um, um, it's, well, it's, although it is going to be said that you are. Well, let it be said so, Wilmot. I, I've, I've made up my mind which way I'm going this year. Yes. Um, and if asked, I'll, I will say, but that's not the issue here. The mm -hmm. issue here is that this is the country's money. It is the country's uh, money. Regardless of who is successful at the polls uh, next year. The principle, the law, and the constitution. Absolutely, Wilmot. Hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online and with us, Mr. David Monken. And we've been talking about the, um, the what's it called? The Universal, Universal Access, Access Fund. Fund. Um, <laughs> and, um, the, and about specifically about an article in the financial gleaner this morning? Uh, no, on the 27th of December. Oh, 27th of December. The business section uh -huh. of the gleaner. Oh, I see. And um, create the impression it leaves is that the Universal Access Fund is anything but universal. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and that, that's really what I want to clarify because maybe the article is entirely wrong in a way. Yes. But certainly from this report, uh -huh. it appears to me that Minister Paulwell has complete, unfettered... In which event it should be called the Paul Bell Access Fund. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Shirley Williams had an interesting article on December 10th. Yes. And, um, and um, she had some, some comments to make on this. That um, if, if correct, and I have no reason to believe that she's, she's incorrect. Uh-huh. But she made an analysis that, that indicated that under Mr. Paulwell, the, his ministry suffered a loss of $15 billion in something like 2000, year 2000. Oh, God. You know, with the net serve and, yes. and, and all of it. Yes. Um, with that kind of record, um, you know, I'm not suggesting any corruption, just, just management of a portfolio. Well, You're you going to lose $15 billion. You know, Mr. Walker. Why on earth do you have control over this kind of money? 
When you add up, somebody should do, sit down and do some research and add up the number of overruns and losses of the kind sustained over the past number of years and present a figure to the Jamaican people on it. Yeah. Well, it seems to me, though, Wilmot, that the Jamaican people are not interested. You know, I've made a, a New Year's resolution, and it's simply to do my utmost in 2007 to make Jamaica a better place to live. Uh -huh. As simple as that. And anything for me next year that, that diverts or that is in contradiction, any action of mine that is in contradiction to making Jamaica a better place to live, I'm going to try and not do. Uh -huh. And anything that I can do to make Jamaica a better place to live, I'm going to try and do. And but Jamaica going is going to be a better place to live only to the extent that the Jamaican people want it to be a better place to live. Yeah, I agree with you, Wilmot. And, and I think if, if there's one thing that I'd like to, to see change, is, is people saying residingly or, or in a resigned way that, sure, is Jamaica this? Is just no better. It's just Jamaica. Well, Jamaica has the, the potential to be much better. You yeah. know, I, I don't believe that we're the greatest people on earth or that we, we're born for great things. We're born for everyday, average things that are good. And, and I think we you have know, the capability no, of that. I don't know that there's any limit to what, you know, as against other f human groups, to what we can achieve. I agree with you. You know? Well, and it doesn't have to be great things, Wilmot. Yes. You know, I think, I think that kind of, 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 of language is... But is, it can be great. I mean, yeah. there's no reason why it can't be great. No reason. But I would yeah. be happy with just an honest, civil, orderly way of life. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with justice. I mean, look in today's newspaper, Wilmot. Some shooting down in Trelawney or something yes. like that. Yes. Look at the signs. The people are have up signs. We want justice. justice. And that, those signs are going up all over Jamaica. It doesn't say we want food. No. It doesn't say we want happiness. All over Jamaica. It is we happening. want justice. Yes. yes. And um, when you look at, I believe you were involved in the, um, what's her name? The little oh, girl. Janice Allen. Janice what Allen. What a tragic case, Wilmot. <laughs> and you know, that policeman, you know, who, who, who was accused of her murder, continues to work for the, for the constabulary force. Oh, is that so? Yes. I think that Shirley Williams is on the line now, you know, we want. Oh, is that so? Uh, hello? Hi, Mr. Perkins. Hi, Miss Williams. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. All the best to you and to David. I hear him on your program. Hi, Shirley. How are you? Hi, David. Thank you very much, Comrade Williams. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why do you laugh? Sorry? Why do you laugh? Did you just say comrade? <laughs> so what's wrong with that, Shirley? I, I think everybody in Jamaica is well aware that um, um, of my political affiliations, and it, it, it has nothing to do with red. L with least of all, comrade. I see. <laughs> Come green, then. <laughs> Very green it is. Oh, I Happily see. so. Mm. You know? I, I gather you've been, um, you've been writing about this... Um, this universal Paul Well Fund. Well, you know, I... Paul, universal Paul Well Access Fund. <laughs> well... No, no, not universal, sorry. The Paul Well Access Fund. The Paul Well Access Fund. Well, the Paul Well Access Fund, gentlemen, is not limited to the Universal Access Fund. There was a column I did, um, which... It might have been a couple of weeks ago um, about corruption, and I listed the various projects where there was overrun or misuse or whatever kind of abuse, and I thought it up. I, I think I mentioned only about four projects, you know. And yes. At the end of it, I mentioned North Coast Highway, for example. I mentioned uh -huh. Universal Access Fund, you uh know, -huh. um, the you know city housing, couple yes. of projects. And Sanders White House, and it's National Solid Waste. And at the end of that, you know, when you look at the 
overrun and the abuses. It, it was some $15 billion. Oh, yes. and, and the point which was being made in Parliament in both the lower and upper house about when we were debating the petro Caribe fund and how we were going to use it was that all these things are done off budget. All these projects of which Universal Access Fund is born. Yes. They're all done off, pro off budget and at the end of the day we hear along the road, along the grapevine really, that there was some misuse and we started to dig in Parliament and then we hear of these billions of dollars. Now, Petro Caribe Fund, Universal Access, remember we had Net Serve and Touchpoint, right? Uh -huh. All of these are off the budget, being managed without the scrutiny of Parliament until it's too late. And sadly, this is where Petro Caribe also has gone. Now, the Universal Access Fund, which, as David said earlier, and as I mentioned in my column, it, it's supposed to gross $1 billion annually, you know. No, you tell me, why is that being managed off budget? Why is that not brought to be approved before the Parliament? Also? Well, why, why are any public funds managed off budget? This is the question. You know, it is done with the intent of circumventing the process such that they can do what they want with it. Absolutely. Remember, David will confirm that I, I don't remember what section of the, con the, the Constitution requires that all revenues be accounted for before Parliament. Yes. Right? That, that, that's in our Constitution and it was put but there. But not only is it in the Constitution, it is fundamental to what is called the Westminster system, Precise. which we say is what we have here. Precisely. Precisely. Right? Precisely. I keep so. repeating, and said it a moment ago, mm -hmm. that King Charles I lost his head because he thought that he, as king, had the right to impose taxes on the British people huh. and spend those taxes without parliamentary approval. See how important the issue of taxes and spending it was in yes. those days, but we have lost all respect for it. No, Mr. Perkins, the fact of the matter is, you see, and I say this over and over, as a people, we are far too tolerant of abuse and corruption. Well, well Shirley, what, what sort of success can we expect the opposition to have in Parliament in, in having all these off-book projects and off-book funds brought in to par for parliamentary scrutiny? Well, you know, um, short of us, each of us bringing a resolution and having the whole issue debated, we do not have the majority in Parliament to do any substantial changes. And when you debate an issue in the lower upper house, it, it comes right back down to the majority. So then a 51% majority in Parliament will defeat you every single time. Well, this is what has been happening, isn't it? So then, if the government really didn't want these these monies to be brought under the purview of Parliament, right. you, you're really just shouting in the wind. We're shouting in the wind, and the population is not even catching it, because the fact of the matter is, I believe that if we brought pressure to bear upon the government from outside of Parliament, they would behave differently in Parliament. That is my view, because if they say, well, you know, okay, it has died, the whole issue, for example, of net service, Look at NetServe, $200 million, okay? When that one went bankrupt, they brought in another company, Touchpoint. My information, which I as alluded to in my column, is that the same principles of NetServe are of Touchpoint. Now, Touchpoint followed suit and went into bankruptcy. What has happened with all of that? No accountability, nothing. In that situation, had not um, the assets been sold to Touchpoint for something like $27 million, and when Touchpoint went over out of business into receivership, they owe the government $28 million? Well, it's more than that because they have unpaid statutory taxes. The, the full debt is not yet um, disclosed because they have unpaid statutory taxes. There are the liabilities there that um, the payment and servicing of the debt in addition to what was given to them. You know, it really, really is a, is a so, so essentially the $27 million that Touchpoint paid to the government for, for net serves assets mm -hmm. was repaid to them by way, of, by way of statutory deductions that were never remitted. 
I, I think there's some unpaid uh, things that we don't know about. We asked questions in the Parliament, and answers. when the answers came back, they were not satisfactory, and we were asked that it be clarified. Today, we are still waiting. You know, um, David... And Mr. Perkins, I just hope that in 2007, some sanity will prevail along the line, you know, because... Well, let me ask you something. Uh -huh. Do you, lady and gentlemen, remember that speech that Mr. Patterson made in Parliament? After the gas riot? After the gas mm -hmm. riot? You remember that? Remind us. Eh? Remind me. When he spoke of the new Jamaican yeah. that had to be respected? Hmm. Huh? Well, you know, the new, the new Jamaican, Jamaican has gone back to bed. <laughs> well, I tell you something, no promises that were made, I can find no promises made by that administration that were honored, really. And I think the same, when I say that administration, I mean under Mr. P.J. Patterson. The many promises that were made, even the simple thing I keep crying out about, clean up Jamaica. Uh -huh. Remember that promise? The beautiful Jamaica that we're going to see, or he was going to clean up. Hold on a moment for me, please. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you. Uh, hello, Miss. Hi. Shirley Williams. Hi there. Hello. I'm on. Can no, you hear me? Yes, yeah, she's on. Okay. Um, Shirley. Uh huh. The the thing that concerns me about the opposition, you see. Uh huh. And and I'm picking it up straight from your article now. You you've you've asserted that in the absence of any other evidence, uh -huh. um, this the, the loss that 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 has been realized mm -hmm. by this government over the past few years, mm -hmm. you, you can draw a conclusion that corruption is involved. Essentially, that's what you're saying. Essentially, that's my conclusion. Right. So, so why then has the opposition not come out clearly and said, look, if we get into power, we're going to run down this corruption and we're going to prosecute people who we find have acted corruptly and we're going to put them in jail if, if the court so finds. I think that David, Mr. Golding, did say that. He said he was going to put some people in short pants. In the, in the prison. You know, but speak... Um, he, he uh, certainly, you know, <laughs> as the election gets nearer and, and we, we are able to articulate all over the country, as we have been doing, right? Mm -hmm. We have been articulating, each of us. I mean, I've been in my own way, Mr. Golding and all other spokespersons, they have been articulating. The bottom line is that we can't get the answers now that we are seeking and we are going to pursue it, each one of us in our ministry, because whichever ministry any one of us is assigned to, we will have each one a responsibility in tracking down what went on in that specific ministry and bringing it to public um, scrut on the public scrutiny. The fact of the matter is we have mentioned some of them, David, um, uh, North Coast Highway, for example, which I heard on this very program, Mr. Clifton, yeah, many a times talking about it. Mm -hmm. I think we have said clearly, maybe we, we need to continue saying it over and over and over, that this corruption must stop. Mr. Golding has a paper in Parliament. He tabled a bill in Parliament. I think it might have been as far back as July, which is supposed to address um, corruption. And to date, they have not put it, um, debated the bill. So, I mean, it is very clear clear that the Jamaica Labour Party is going to implement through laws and through oversight measures to control corruption because well, if it, this country, David, remains corrupt, we will never move forward. Absolutely, but more importantly, you will remain corrupt unless some people go to jail for corrupt practices. I agree 100% with you. I mean, the, the, the king losing his head is a bit drastic. I mean, <laughs> but here in Jamaica, we really don't need to send persons in, in, to account in, in, in prisons. You know, I mean, you, we, you really don't need or do need. We do need. Oh. We do. Remember, in my column, I think it might have been uh, um, the one just before Christmas. I, I said that one of my week Christmas wishes was that um, the contractor general would continue to to pursue his his um, 
investigations into all the various issues and to bring accountability to them. And I really, really do mean that. I mean, thank God that the contractor general has been so detailed in what he has been doing. But we need to bring somebody to account. And I think that the Jamaica Labour Party, through the leader, has clearly said so on many occasions. But as you say, David, for us to really um, get action, we have to be... In government, we can't. We're from the opposition. We can only talk, sadly enough. Miss Williams, thank you very much. Yeah? You're most And welcome. all the best for the new year. And thank you. All the best, you, you, to You're you David. Uh, okay, um, Mr. Wonken. Yes, sir, Wilmot. This argument that has been going on in Mandeville, you are a, you are a lawyer yourself. Uh-huh. Um, um, what is your perception of what is going on? You're speaking about the the question of, of the lawyers and the police. The lawyers and the police. Yes. And the assertion by the police. By the police that and the specifically by uh, Assistant Commissioner Green. All right. I think I think that has less to do with whether the lawyers actually did or did not. Um, refused representation and more to do with whether the police misrepresented the position that yes. they did uh-huh. and if they have misrepresented a position why yes um difficult question to answer um clearly if there's been misrepresentation um then the person who has made the misrepresentation need to to give if possible some some justification of it uh-huh. and if it's just a a sort of malicious misrepresentation, then then he should be sanctioned in some way. I, it, so it would seem. Um, Assistant Commissioner Green said on this program that he had been told this by um, police officers in Mandeville. Right. Right? Now, if, if the Assistant Commissioner is told this by police officers in Mandeville, and then it is denied by the lawyers, then surely he doesn't keep repeating this. What he does is um, investigate the matter. Well, he certainly should investigate the information given to him. Uh And it can't be a justification for him to to maintain the position in an effort to protect the police force. Uh Um, his being here, his, his, his very presence in Jamaica as a foreign police officer yes. is as a result of our wanting to improve the force that we have. And if he can't do that, then uh, goodbye, let him go back home. I, I certainly wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, it's one thing to ask for expertise, but that expertise has to be ethical and yes. credible. Yes. You know, he may well be very qualified, but if he is, in fact, misrepresenting, and if there is a, a, a malicious or, or some alternate uh, motive, then um, it's unethical. But he, he was on this program, uh-huh. right? So was Mr. What's his name? Rudolph Gittins. And um, Mr. Gittins was challenging him to say who the lawyers were mm-hmm. that had been had had expressed some unwillingness to um and he refused to say i had not heard that discussion but if i have no doubt of what you say yeah um it brings quickly to mind wilmot the 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 appalling article confession of a corrupt cop yes um a couple sundays yes indeed okay um and it brings quickly to mind the the code of conduct that this policeman was say, was saying exists in a police force where uh-huh. you protect your brother yes at all costs yes now could it be that that is what this foreign police officer was doing was protecting well, I and, don't know. and it, if so if so then he certainly is not adding quality uh-huh. to our police force yes but the other question is of course why would the police want to be deceiving the public on this issue. Why make out that the lawyers in Mandeville don't want to be involved in this in this case? And, when and just on a side, you know, Wilmot, for for us to be sure that we have the right persons for us to be sure that the persons that the police have in custody are the uh-huh. guilty parties. Yes. The law has to take its course. 
These yes. people have to be brought to trial. Uh -huh. They have to be defended. Yes. And, and the accusations have to be tested. Yes. Otherwise, me, we may well end up convicting Putting the wrong, wrong persons. Yes. And the real, the real perpetrators uh, are, but, are but, gone. But uh, don't you think that a lot of this is happening in Jamaica? Well, I think so, Wilmot. Sadly, I, th huh? I, do, I do believe that we convict a lot of the times the wrong people. Yes. No, they may be guilty of other things, Maybe. but that's not the issue. Uh -huh. That can't be the issue. Uh -huh. And and whilst you know, I along with with everyone else would love to see the perpetrators of this terrible crime brought uh -huh. to justice. Yes, we can't just grab on to people and and abuse the system of justice yes. such that we're not sure. No, but if you convict the wrong people. You're letting go the perpetrator Absolutely. of the crime. And that is to why. Go and do another one. And that is why, even though it might be an emotionally satisfying thing to say these people don't deserve representation, it's not a practical way to go. Oh, yes. They have to have representation. But I don't know that the lawyers have said that. The lawyers have not said that, and I was grateful for yeah. that. So it brings you back to the same question that you were asking. If the lawyers had not refused representation, then why did the policeman say? that they had. Precisely. There seemed to be an, an, to have been an interest in I, getting I them know. into Kingston. I don't know the answer to I that. I don't know what the answer is, but they wanted to get them into Kingston. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Right? I heard somebody make the comment too, you know, that lawyers in Kingston, very many lawyers in Kingston, practice right across the island. Yes. So, I mean, it's... Quite true. You know? There would have been no difficulty getting lawyers from Kingston to represent, to, them to represent them in Mandeville. So I, I don't know what that so is what about. It, what was it about? I really, I really don't know, Wilmot. I wish I could add something to the, to the discussion, but I really can't. I, I don't know the answer. Uh -huh. I really don't. But um, um, I don't know. Is, is it not a matter that the Bar Association should take up? I think it should. Uh -huh. and, and the president, Mr. Leiber, is, is a person who, who would pick that up. Yes. I'm, I'm confident. Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's something that we should investigate. I think it desperately needs investigation. And, and the police shouldn't be shy to say that they've made a mistake, if in fact they have, or uh -huh. if one of their members has, has, has been abusive to the system, then they should say that. Yes. You know? Um, but I don't see, I mean, you know, there's so many lawyers practicing in Mandeville, right? Um, and in, in, that area generally. Um, what are they saying? How, uh, to make that statement, they would have had to, to have spoken to at least ten lawyers and been turned down by all ten of them? Yes. Am I right? Yes, and as well would have had to have, have explored lawyers who practice in the circuit. Yes. Um, who, who have main offices in Kingston. Yes. To say, look, I mean, we need some representation for, for these Absolutely. people. Absolutely. It, it's a little strange, Wilmot. Why move them to Kingston when you can move the lawyer to Mandeville? It's a little strange. <laughs> Wilmot, as to the wrap-up sign, I'm going yes. to have to take my leave. I just wanted to wish you and your family oh, all you. the very, very best. Thank you very much. And may and I say this, and at the very same to you. And to your listeners. And, and you're yes. still, still my personality of the year, Wilmot Perkins. I beg your pardon? You're my personality of the year. I beg your pardon? On what basis? And I, I thank you very much for your, your input. On what basis? On your performance. Oh, come on. Don't joke. I'm not. Make, you sound like a madman. <laughs> <laughs> All the best very much. Thank you very much, David. All the best to you, too. Good. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online, and we're going to read a couple of emails now. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Um, this comes from Crick Info. Chris? Crick. Like in cricket? Or uh -huh. Crick? Info. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, dated December 21. Someone just sent us the email. Mr. Perkins, I don't know if you saw this, but I think your listeners would be interested to hear it. The article is called World Cup Visa Row Frustrates Australians. 
fans traveling to the World Cup from Australia have had a bad week. There's a report yes. published in some newspaper. In, the, in Crimco, Crim Info, Crick Info. Uh -huh. Cricket Information. Uh -huh. Oh, that's an Australian paper then? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it? I don't know. Go ahead. Fans travelling to the World Cup from Australia have had a bad week. Hot on the heels of finding out that they will need to pay an additional US $100 for a special visa when they visit the Caribbean, it now appears that the hassle-free system to apply for the necessary documentation has proved anything but... Ostensibly, the visa is to enable visitors to travel between various islands without going through the normal immigration controls. Although a number of people have contacted Crick Info asking why they have to pay the additional sum when they only planned to visit one island. I wonder the which island that was. The authorities had trumpeted how visa centers had been established and how there will be two or three week turnaround for applications. However, Mayor Amor Motley, the Deputy Prime Minister of Barbados, admitted yesterday that all was not well. Quote, we have hit a snag with the issuing of the special visa in Australia, but we are seeking to resolve the issue as soon as possible. I wish to assure our friends in Australia that this will be ironed out, unquote. We took the decision, quote again, we took the decision to establish a temporary physical consular presence in Australia to reduce the inconvenience to Australians and New Zealanders. We believe that this is a gesture of good faith on our part, in spite of the expense which we are incurring. This is especially since the Caribbean people are unable to obtain a visa to enter Australia without sending their passports to Canada. <laughs> Unquote. Motley's remark will hardly be of any consolation, given that there would seem to be a duty on any country hosting a major international tournament to make access as straightforward as possible. The comments came after reports that the process for issuing visas in Australia was in shambles. In a, oh, Caribbean visas? Yes. Oh, hell. Quote, the visas could take up to three weeks and then you have to send your passport in. Unquote. Australia's Honorary Consul General to Trinidad and Tobago, Michael Agustin, said. But we don't know where they have to send it. The mission has arrived here and they've got offices, but they haven't taken them up yet. They have the staff, but we don't know where they are. Unquote. It's been reported that Cricket Australia had received a formal complaint from the Australian federal government about the visa delays and was contemplating its next move. Quote, it's an issue we might seriously need to raise with the ICC, Peter Young, General Manager of Public Affairs of the Board, stated. The authorities denied accusations that the visa was a money-making venture insisting that the revenue raised would barely meet the costs of the acquisition of the visa system. They also explained that the visa carried wide-ranging security features which would enable the region to minimize the security threats which it may face during the Games. Information on the issuing sites, visa application form, and instruction sheet are available at IMPACS, Impact's website, www.caricompacts.org. Okay. Interesting. Uh, we take a break. We come back shortly. Watch, we're back here. Back to the email. Mr. Perkins. I was just listening to your program on the internet and heard you and a caller comparing the per capita murder statistics 
for Jamaica and Brooklyn, New York. I did some quick online searches and found that in 2002, Brooklyn's population was over 2.5 million people with 336 murders, <laughs> or an equivalent of 13 per 100,000 persons uh -huh. versus Jamaica with more than oh, twice. Don't bother calculate Jamaica. That is... <laughs> Jamaica's murder, is too murder rate is 32 for every 100. So, and, and Brooklyn is how much? 13. Well. <laughs> Motti, have you noticed? In Jamaica today, we find the standards are progressively being lowered in every aspect of life. And more surprisingly, the standard bearers find themselves either making excuses for this sorry state of existence or are utterly confused by what is taking place. Things are now so bad that the upper class and the middle class are fearful of even their shadows. The distortionists among us are in the ascendancy in terms of of imposing their values and influencing and enforcing a subculture which is dragging us all down to hell. For the first time, Mr. Perkins, we have a Prime Minister who does not command the respect of our parliamentary colleagues. <laughs> no one can accuse this Prime Minister of being a one-man band. On the other hand, with regard to this band, the Cabinet, this represents the only band where the members direct the leader. We are a rudderless ship. We lack proper values, morals, discipline, law and order, good work, ethics, and attitude. Oh, poor uh, sister P. Marty, I was just listening to your discussion with Mr. Wong Ken and Miss Williams regarding the Minister Paulwell and the whole amount of 15 billion which he has managed to lose in his time as minister. Can you tell me, Mr. Perkins, what is the secret of this minister's success? <laughs> Why is he untouchable? I regard a traffic or issue in which it was his ministry, the Ministry of Mining, over which he is supposed to have portfolio responsibilities, which should have been involved. He should have been the spokesman, instead of which it was wrong jungle. Uh, who was on the air most of the time, uh -huh. spinning away. There was never a word from Mr. Paulwell. When he does anything wrong, it is this, as in Ned Sir, it is this Mr.'s youthful exuberance. We need to look at this, Mr. Perkins, $15 billion? It is unbelievable. What is the secret of this young man's success? That he has been successful. $15 billion? Why has he not so. been removed as a minister? or allowed to answer for any of these losses. <laughs> there uh, are others, I don't know. There are others, but I, I'll give the callers. His colleagues must find him congenial. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello? Hello? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, I... Found uh, the, the gentleman from the Automobile Association. Uh -huh. He bring a little something fresh to your program. A little what? Something something different. Uh -huh. No politics or anything. Yes. Yes, because even the colors that the the the, the, the Mr. Wang King and the lady they, they bring politics into it. And this man was. Will you keep your voice up for me? Yes, this man he was talking. Um, something that can help or probably save a life. Yes. About the driving on the highway. Yes. And also the tire situation. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, and that is very good. Yes. Yes. Uh, and callers like these, we, we, we accept them more than the 
political thing. Because even the Mr. the, the lawyer there, one can always call him. You don't like politics. No, no, wait, wait, no. He was trying to say things seem to him. Seem to him. He's not cocksure. He's not sure. Uh -huh. he, he's just making an allegation. He was making some allegations. I, I, I don't think he was, he was quite sure of what he was saying. Because uh, more than ten times he used the word seem. Things seem to him. Use the word what? Things that seems. S-E-E-M-S. -E yes. Yes. What's wrong with that? No, I don't see anything wrong with it. But oh, I, I was wondering whether you were suggesting that that word should be banned from no, the English language. I don't say. Uh -huh. I, I did All not right. say that. But but he, he did not say it is definitely. No, he, but, he didn't say it was definitely. But no, no. But he, I mean, he, he's an honest and mm -hmm. reputable man. Mm -hmm. He would not want to say that unless he had absolute proof. Exactly. Uh -huh. So why made so it? So he uh, said mm -hmm. the, what he said mm -hmm. was what was justified by the facts as they were known to him. Yes, uh, but, but you can see that he, 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 he went on... But you have a prob you have problem with that. Uh, he went on further uh, as if, uh, really and truly, you, you can see his colors. Uh -huh. His colors? Yes, and you can see... Uh, what exactly about where, his colors? Oh, Lord, Mr. Perkins, you can see where he was leading to. Right? So that's why I said that this man who talk about it, the tire business and the whole driving in Jamaica and uh -huh. the... The alcohol is the man, what have you, and driving on the sea yes. is safe. But the people, uh -huh. is, a, is a good thing, is a breath of fresh air. Yes, the no politics at all. Uh, but but you are here now, you are here now to bring back the politics. No. No? Uh, did I mention politics, sir? Well, you, you, you did mention politics, but, um, um, didn't you? Uh. Didn't you say no politics, and that is what you liked about, um, that gentleman? Yes. But then uh, by the very mention of it, you are bringing back no, the politics. I'm not, I'm not bringing it back. You are no. saying that, Mr. No, no. Anyway, well, let me go on a little quicker, because I was holding on so long. <laughs> now, no, um, this, this caller from New York. Uh -huh. said but I before you go on to that, yes. um, what is your view of Mr. Paul Will and this, this control of the money that he has been put into his hands without any parliamentary control? And the um, and the possibility that uh, you know they they may just run with it. Uh, you know, possibility. Huh? I, I am not think, 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 thinking about any possibility, sir. Uh -huh. We can also we can. Well, also, I mean, we know in the past that they run with it. Uh, when it go, go where? You don't remember when? Uh, how far they went? Go? Huh? How far they went with it? Uh, they went to the point they <laughs> they won the election. <laughs> Mr. Perkins. Yeah, people are always talking about Sorry. one election. Yeah, you know, here one next month you will you can spend buy all the core goat game and spend all the money we want to spend. But when it come in, 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 eat them out and vote them out. You never hear that? Nyam them out and vote them out. You never hear that in Jamaica? Well uh, okay. Let's right. hope that people are taking uh, right. uh, let, let us let us go on. Huh? This caller caller from New York. He spoke about the he will never return to Jamaica. Uh huh. In 1976, to be exact, I spent a few weeks with a relative somewhere in Toronto. Uh -huh. And let me tell you something. This person was saying, look how, look how Canada clean and nice. Look, you're here two weeks now, I don't see one fly. I will never return to Jamaica. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, about five years now, first come out come be in house and live in Jamaica. I'm living in Jamaica now. Yes. So uh -huh. all the people here are chat chat. Uh -huh. If a man have him good money, where him can sit down for the good, he must forget all the coal and stuff. Yes, well. them in New York. Uh -huh. They must come straight back and live. Well, all right. You understand what I mean? Uh -huh. So so that is just cheap talk, uh, and and we, we we know that already. Well, I don't know that. I know that there are persons who don't come back. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, and let me say something quick because time is winding up. You know, we are living in two Jamaica, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Two Jamaica means that if you listen to talk shows, sometimes you, you work, in, work and listen. <laughs> work and listen. If you listen to one talk show, yes. you hear how things are wonderful. No, no, and no. And the no. economy is on the, <laughs> is on the verge of an, no, a takeoff. No, no, pray at me, man. Right? <laughs> let me talk. <laughs> let me talk to Perkins. <laughs> Uh, um, and if you listen to another, <laughs> <Mr>. Man, <laughs> uh, it's pure um, yes. murder mouth and... You, you, you get the man, you give the, the lawyer money, goes with the talk, and, she, and he calls his, his friend 
and them talk. The Williams. I said, give me a chance to talk to. Uh -huh. Good. No, a few weeks ago, a lady on a different station from St. Mary called and she said she was some farm queen or whatever. I think she's, but, but anyway, she started to do some little work. Um, uh, she was helped by the 4-H to, to rear some chickens. And she go on and go on at, at, at 14 years old. And now she's but like 19. And she will tell you what she did in St. Mary. And when I listen to the same day, no, I listen to your program after. And a man I talk from St. Mary the worst parish, had the worst road, and this and that. But I'm saying... Well, I suggest to you, sir, station, if you doubt him uh, about it being the, the mm, parish. Mm, um, uh, well, I think that that might be contested. Because if you listen to uh, Mr. Vazen, I'm talking about roads in Portland. Uh, they really sound terrible. I haven't been there for a little while. Yes. But um, the roads in St. Mary, I can tell you, yes, really in a shop. But apart from the road, the man was saying, like, no, no, go on, this, that, and that. And I'm saying oh, that the young lady, uh -huh. she was saying that she, she employed, right now, in her employment is about, um, you know, like, some lady that's 12 or 16 people. Uh -huh. And and how she, she's doing some other, work, some other farming apart from her chicken rearing. Yes. And she paints a great picture. Uh -huh. And minutes after your program was there... Yes, I know. I mean, but you are happy with um, things as they are. You think things eh? are going swimmingly. Yes. And the economy is about to take off. Uh, listen, man. Eh? I didn't say that, no. But I'm saying... You don't think the economy is about to take off? But, Mr. Mr. Perkins, what is your wish? Wish for Jamaica for, for 207? For 07? For for um Zero next seven. for yes. next year? Yes. That it would come to its senses. Yes, and what again? <laughs> well and prosperity for the people. That it would come eh? to its senses. Yes, come to its senses. Yes. And do what? Well I don't believe that prosperity will be available uh -huh. to Jamaica uh -huh. without Jamaica coming to its senses. Anyway, I wish right? prosperity for everybody. And I wish Mr Perkins will change his tune and find something positive to say during the year. <laughs> you mean you, 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 you're wishing that I would become a spinner? No, no I didn't say spinner, no. I said talk huh? positive things <laughs> and find something <laughs> good to talk sometime uh, during the week. I don't know what you mean by positive things, sir, but we haven't got the time to explain now. Man. All right, next time we talk. Okay, okay, that brings us to the end of Perkins Online for today, for the week, and for the year. 2006. Uh, we look forward to being back with you early next year. In the meantime, may I wish you all the very best for the new year. Okay? So long.